we're back. Three days of Gorilla Radio. This is the best week ever, right? <laughs> I thought we'd just break it down and do four. Everyone get their own semi-state. We, oh, you've done four before. When we, we I know. bring on uh, Chad and you and just different people, and that that kicked my butt. <laughs> this is kicking my butt, I have to say the least. Last night's three-hour one. So if, if you didn't tune in man. last week or last night, that's a great, that was a great episode. Uh, Triple B always adds some great flavor. And just lots of good stuff. <laughs> yeah, obviously he had a lot of a lot of good stuff, man. It's always good to get on here. Uh, it wasn't as loud as he normally is. Got a lot a couple times, but you know knows knows his stuff. Has a good network of people and can give you a lot of info, which is always real cool. Yes, it is. Um, so we're gonna talk about Newcastle one fifty two up, and then we're gonna get into Fort Wayne. Um, one one little piece of news as like you know we're just gonna get hop right, hop right into this, but. Uh, Looks like Jesse's uh, wrestling, getting a rematch with Sw- Swiderski at uh, the day before NCAAs up in Detroit at the Rudy's Plus um, Mega Card thing. I know um, Sarah Hildebrandt's on the card too. I don't. I've seen a bunch of matches uh, advertised. I just don't know. It's like there's a lot of really good matches on it. So um, pretty neat to see that and get a rematch. Yeah, that's and awesome. Hopefully he kicks his butt. Sorry. No, no. Oh, yeah. It was a good match last time. Um, I'm sure Jesse will be ready. He'll be at 45. So, yep. Some good matches. You got Colin Moore, Nate Jackson, Derek White, Amir Desi. Um, who else? Martina Aymar versus Daringer. That'll be a good one. K- oh, Kayla Miracle's on there, too. Emma Bruntel, Bruno Bruntel uh, for Miracle. Uh, let's see. Pantaleo, Alex Pantaleo, Jordan Oliver. Man, this is a real good. Miles Martin, Mark Martin. Mark Hall, um, you got uh, Kyle Snyder and Jaden Cox also. So, um, man, nice little warm up before the NCAA's. Yeah, I'm gonna have to check out exactly where that is because Enfi. I, I mean, I might have. I know with ESPN, not humble brag here, but uh, <laughs> I know I might have to come in this Wait, early. And, you're gonna work for ESPN? Yeah. Yeah. What? <laughs> <laughs> got connections i get to work for espn so um yeah talk to me later about that if, if you're interested in going to ncas anyone wants to go to ncas i gotta I, I might be able to get you to work a job with espn if you like if you pay me enough and you get paid <laughs> so i think uh last time i ruined it they closed it down for covid i think i'm bad luck <laughs> yeah so um do you wanna, oh sp- speaking of humble the the, the carroll regional Coach of the year, Andrew Oberlin's here. <laughs> How do, do all the coaches vote on that? Yeah, the just regional a- coaches vote on it, and they they it actually kind of just kind of draw it out of a hat. Um, luckily, it, Andy won it somehow. He must have kissed a lot of babies and shook a lot of hands or something. I don't know. He's a he, no, nah. no, nah, he deserves it. He's a good guy and he's done a pretty good job at that uh, Homestead program. So, um. Proud of him a little bit. I hate to say, you know, it's kind of hard for me to say, but uh, he's a good little guy. So, <laughs> so maybe hopefully he gets a state qualifier this week, and then he'll be happy. So, but any other pieces of advice, uh, words of advice before we get dive into uh, Newcastle? I heard uh, Peyton Kendall's out of the bracket at uh, East Chicago. I know he's still in our in our uh, bracket. I'm not positive that I, I thought that was someone sent me that. I didn't check on track, but you know we kind of talked about that a little bit off and on about um, being the alternate at some of those locations is going to be this is the year for it. You know, if you're going, and I don't know what's going on, Peyton. I know he's dealt with some stuff this year, but I don't know if that's uh, a true thing or not. I'm sure someone will let us know. Um, he would have had, yeah, he's out. Um, is Xander Payton from Mishawaka's in there? Yeah, I don't see him in the bracket. So hopefully, whatever it is, he's back soon. I know that sucks. Um, so yeah, I think because he, he had white neck, didn't he? Yeah, he was in that uh, quarter with white neck. Yeah. So yeah, he is not in that quarter anymore. I know. Um, as far as changes, I know I got one. A couple Hobart kids were. Um, Johnny McGill is out, and I know I, I updated our brackets. Johnny McGill, he's at what one forty five. Yep. They moved in somebody. Um somebody in there. And then one fifty two, the um 
looking through these, I'm like, man, I remember going over these. Um, that's a, uh, Kes not Castell. It's 160. Turek. Turek is in for Hobart. Um, the third placer dropped out, I believe. Yeah, Turek is in. And somebody else, one of their third placers, uh, dropped out. So I, and that's what uh, uh, Joe Hansen sent me earlier today. And I know uh, there's one in Fort Wayne at 126. He's Noble Kids out. So, um, or one twenty. What? How's that? 126? No, I, I meant 120. I'm sorry. <laughs> Byerly. Byerly's good, out. No, Black. not 126. That would have been a big news. Uh, yeah, Blake Byerly is still real tough. It's unfortunate for him. I mean, we're going to get to Fort Wayne tonight. Yeah. Um, but like we, we've kind of been saying it and we say these death draws and um, that's never the draw you want. But if the person that beats you is a semi-state champ, you still have an opportunity. Keep your weight close. Yep. Yeah. And yeah, we're, we're in that area where, you know, COVID can knock. I mean, depending on the school, depends on what goes on. I mean, it's not a, that's knock on wood. We've been pretty you know, a couple of teams, about two, three or three or four teams last year got kind of dinged um, late in the season with quarantines. This year, we have not had any that I have heard of. Um, so that's a good thing. So I, I know, you know, not to get on the COVID. I mean, I know the thing, the numbers were pretty high earlier in, you know, right after Christmas and stuff. And now it seems like things are leveling out. So it's a good thing for many, you know, for, you know, for all sports, for basketball, for wrestling, all those things, you know, you don't want to see a team have to forfeit or stuff like that or have key guys out so um so anyway that's my they released uh yeah i mean COVID sucks yeah um they released the uh, state final stuff they got yep. to do the, the science seating to get right yes sounds like they're doing um sounds like they're opening up at what 9 a.m i just posted that today the the uh, state finals info center so check that out that'll be pinned to the top probably starting sunday um that's gonna have articles brackets Everything you need to know, start times, the links to the uh, to Ticketmaster uh, Friday. So they're selling Friday tickets starting at Wednesday at 10 a.m. And then on the Saturday tickets at 10 p.m. is when they're doing those. And I'm going to buy a, a block of tickets and raffle them out if anyone wants to sit there. Yeah. yeah that's a, I mean, I like the idea that, you know, you can just go buy your tickets. The bad thing is... The one, I mean, there's things I like. I mean, I don't like the rushing and the saving seats. I hate that. I hate that they that we have to save seats and stuff. Um, but you know, if I want to sit beside you, I'm gonna have, we're gonna have to somehow. I'll buy the tickets, or you buy the tickets, or you know, I I love the the blocks of fans, the the mo that whole section of modern day that goes from the first yeah. row to the second, and and they just now they're gonna be spread out. Unless, I mean, well, how many can you buy in a, a row, right? Like, you can buy eight. Is I that think what they said? eight is what I, because I went through the basketball. I was like, because the basketball ones were for sale, but it's only, it was kind of weird. It's only a few sections. Um, and you can only buy eight. So you're going to be like, hey, you know, all the modern day people, hey, we're going to be in section 120 or whatever. You got to try to get there, but then you're going to be sprinkling on some Hobart kids, some Carroll people, some Maryville people, some Newcastle. It'd be It'd be cool if it was like NCAA's where they like released it to like a school, right? Like if, yeah. like in the percentage by like what you bring. Like I know uh, at NCAA's like Cornell does like the C of C's, yeah. and that whole section's Cornell. Yeah. You know. Yeah, and that's, that's if you could buy it through your your school. Yeah, that would be, especially right, like basketball. Like you're only gonna basketball, football, those sports. You're gonna have two teams, and you can kind of sit on one side or the other you can say this is carol this is calumet or wherever you know you know you know where you're gonna sit um uh so i don't yeah I, you know, it'll be interesting hopefully they'll you know the first year for it they'll tweak it i know like ohio d does that they, they sell um you know individual tickets the signed tickets and stuff so um i don't know how that works do, does you know saint ed just buy a whole section or do they you know yeah, so so that, it'll be interesting to see. Um, you got to figure out all that kind of stuff. Um, and the bad thing is we won't. I mean, we'll. Yeah, I don't know. It it'll work. It'll be fine, and it'll be nice that you don't have to rush in. You know, right at t you know for two hours early and sit there and hold your seats and not go to the bathroom, that kind of stuff. But it sounds like Caleb, they are not limiting spectators. So from what I can 
from everything I've gathered, there's no limits. Unless something I have not seen. I've not seen any limits, so that's the good thing. I'm asking for a friend. Are they bringing back Ritter's frozen custard? Are they bringing <laughs> back the shaved ice? There you go. Yeah, that's the bigger question. <laughs> um, I, I don't know if it does it really count as a state finals if there's no shaved ice. I'm about to check the rule book. <laughs> they uh, we were just talking about rules too. <laughs> <laughs> yes. They um, but I think like overall, I like the 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 sign scene. I think maybe there's a better way to uh like it's like to get people in those areas. I used to feel like that at when uh some of my stay was at Maryville. They had these four coves. And I was, I always felt like if you're the team that brings the most kids, I like give them a cove, mm-hmm. like that overhang. But it was a free for all. Yeah, yeah, and I think they can. Man, I, there has to be a good way to do that. I mean, just yeah, there has to be a way that you can. The teams should have, you know, a lot of the teams, you know, hundred tickets a team. I don't know. That's yeah. You know, that has a kid there. Uh, fifty tickets, I guess. You can go fifty. Fifty would be fine. Um, well, I mean, it could be a percentage of your qualifiers. So you have at least two parents and then maybe like three others or four other people. And then not everyone's going to use those tickets and you can sell them however yeah. you want to. Like if your mom and dad, your girlfriend, your brother, your sister wants to go and then whoever, but not everyone's going to have that. And you can have, okay, we'll have seven extra tickets. And then, you know, I think it, you know, creates bigger cheering sections like where are they going to go like after you win it you're gonna have to point all over the whole stadium you're not gonna be able to point to one section yeah what if cj what if this was with cj and he couldn't run over to new palace st- station and dance yeah he would have to run seven stations yeah yeah he's, he's gonna man that's gonna take forever but yeah that's a i mean you, if you go like 10 tickets per qualifier in a dozen i mean because i think the parents and the parents of qualifiers should be able to be in the lower bowl you get ten tickets yeah. per qualifier. That's twenty two hundred tickets. And if you're on yeah. <laughs> so um, you get you have twenty two hundred tickets. That's plenty. Um, yeah. So I'm curious what they'll do with the the athletes if they want. Because last year that we were up in the way way up your deck, which is fine. It was nice to be able to spread out and be able to watch wrestling and not have to be you know worrying about getting up and someone taking your seat that kind of stuff. So. Yeah. And that that's kind of the. Uh... I mean, that's where the media was at. The media was up on the cl- the suite level too. Yeah, so it, it was nice up there. I mean, I granted we weren't real close, but at the same time, I could sit by there. I had my computer. I could do whatever I needed to do up there, and I wasn't scrunched on people and got to relax and didn't have to fight over seats. So yeah, we'll see how. Hopefully, things go well. I, I'm curious what they'll do with the the wrestlers and coaches because usually we have to go fight for seats, and <laughs> now. Yeah. Do we have to go get a seat? I guess I don't. I mean, there's a lot of questions to be answered, you know, but I think I think it's a good thing. I think it, I, the saving of the seats and the rush and all that stuff is just it's absolutely crazy. So, yeah, I, I would like to you know, you'd always want to. I, I always feel like and I was talking to someone about wrestlebacks and um, they said that they, they feel like uh, there's a lot of coaches that probably don't want wrestlebacks. And I was like, I don't know if I believe that. He's like, yeah, like, think about if you're not a strong team, like you have one shot to like get through by upsetting someone like deep down, they probably really don't want to wrestle back because then the best guys are going to takes away that upset, that possibility mm-hmm. of a surprise state qualifier. Yeah. I think so. That's a valid point. I think some do. I mean, yeah. I mean, but yeah. Anyway, no Tyler, there's no guest, just me and Mike, Mike and I, so we're going to get into it. Let's go to, hopefully this is the right, uh, one yes yep wrong thing there we go 152 at newcastle starting off let me make sure we have the right there we go let's see that is that's 152 newcastle yeah that's newcastle okay (laughs) so we are at 152 we got uh corbin watson Lawrenceburg, number 12, Carter Richardson, Noblesville, Devontae Rivers, Southport, and Eaton Halavai Carmel. We got 12 and 15. This will be a real good uh, quarterfinal. Um, another spot where there's some probably worse draws for, you know, Carmel. And we talked about this last night a little bit. You know, Carmel got some good draws. There's worse draws there. They probably got the best draw possible. We got 
a nine, a seven. You got either get Glithero, Nazarod, Road, or uh, Watson, and you know, I'll take, you know, he's the lowest ranked guy, so that's probably a little bit better draw there. Yeah, um, I think he's pretty tough, too. I think he's had some nice wins this year. Uh, obviously, being undefeated, <clears throat> there's two undefeated guys in that in that half. But you look at that, and like you said, like, that's not the, the worst-case scenario, but it's going to be a tough one. Yeah. You know? Had to move it over here. <laughs> So, oops, sorry, going down that here. Uh, then you got Max Nazarod from Alexandria. He's a returning state qualifier. Luke Thomas, Jason Rooney, Tyler Jones. That's, that's a tough one. Uh, Jones is a two-time placer. Um, dropped down to 52 late, and that's a rough uh, take-around match. Should be one of the better ones. Uh, you know, not many top 10 guys battling out in the quarters. No, and and that was a, we thought that was a, a solid move, 22-3. and three. Um, who won? Who won? Uh, did Glithro win that regional? Yeah, or, Glithro did. And Glithro's tough, man. So another undefeated guy in that that semi state of fifty two. That's gonna be a tough match. Um, Nas Nazo Rod's had a really good season. I know he's beat some tough guys this year. Um, returning, like you said, returning state qualifier and Tyler Jones. This is the kind of the year. Usually he has about ten losses or eight losses. <laughs> this is the year that. Yeah. You know, this is the time of year he really steps it up and he finds a way to the stand. It's two for two so far, but that's going to be a – or two out of three so far. That's going to be a tough one. Yeah. Um, going down, you got Cody, Cody Glithero, uh, Ron Colley. Been right on the cusp of uh, qualifying for state the past couple of years. He's been as – you know, probably one of those guys that if you look at how many state-ranked guys, state placers, qualifiers, someone's beaten and, and hasn't made the state, he's probably won the top two or three. Um, having a good year, undefeated, 33-0, uh, and 0, Devin Miller. Rossville, Jackson Edwards Cathedral, and then John Everhart from uh, Castle, Newcastle. So um, pretty solid, pretty good position for him this year to punch his ticket and uh, maybe bring home a medal. Yeah, I think uh, <clears throat> Cody Glitter, another guy that's grown over the years. Oh, I think yes. he started three, 6, 13, had a win over Cotty at the regional, lost at the semi-state that year, um, 26 to 52, or 38 to 52. So... No, definitely growing up, but Ron Callie's wrestled a really tough schedule. He, he's gone out and got a lot of really good wins. Obviously, that was one of the better guys for them at Team State. It's almost a guaranteed win. He's 33-0, and one uh, modern day. So, Everhart's tough, 26-5. and I know he's in the rankings, but that is going to be a tough one. Cody Glithrow, I think he's going to be right in the mix for a state title. Yeah, this whole weight class, just looking at it, it's pretty, uh, pretty well separated. You know, you got – Eight ranked guys looks like they're all about you know, and about as well seated as you could get at this level. Um, oh yeah, going down you got Anthony Reinhardt, Tony Tony Big Tone from uh, Zionsville, tough 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 freshman. Um, Josh Van Dostel from Greenfield Central, Jordan Tecara from Union County, and Eli Bustamante, um, pretty tough senior from Bishop Ch Chatard. He's beating up on his brother in the front yard in the snow what I've gathered. So, um, so, you know, pretty good uh, take around match. Reinhardt's really good. So um, should be a real good uh, take around match here. Yeah, Reinhardt, uh, a pinner too. I know um, going into Al Smith, that was a guy that a lot of people are high on. I know uh, Garcia had him, you know, in the finals. I think he had, Garcia had a winning it. Uh, he ran into a real tough uh, Sam going there. But it separated pretty well. I mean, depending on how you look at uh Rankings wise and undefeated guys, but three undefeated guys and a really tough one loss freshman. Not a bad uh, weight class there. No, not at all. Going down one six. Probably one of the probably one of their more solid weight classes. Crossed. I mean, no one's gonna want to draw that one Friday night. No, I mean, not at all. That, I mean, who's coming out as a you know you're you're thinking Reinhardt's probably the favorite. Glethro, tough tough three. You don't want to run. Yeah, I mean, coming in second, you're thinking okay. Yeah, I'm looking at fifty two. I like, oh, we you know. Finish a second, you know, like that's that's a good spot to be. And then you're running into Glithro, who just took his first loss. Um, Nazarod or, or Halloran or, or Watson, you know, those those guys. Tyler Jones. Or Tyler Jones, yeah. yeah. Man. For, I mean, I know that that's kind of been the, the theme this year that everyone said that Newcastle's down. I'm willing to bet no one's, you know, marking Newcastle 52 down. That's the one we want to draw on Friday night. Yeah, definitely. 
uh, 160. Crew Farrell from Frankton, tough sophomore, 32 and 1. Uh, Brenton Russell, Warren Central. Kenny Getch from Lebanon. And then Leo Calderon from Centerville. Um, you got 11 and 14. A um, little bit switched with uh, semi state rankings, but both are, you know, both two one loss guys. Um, should be a pretty, another good quarter bracket here. Yeah, Leo Calderon, um, freshman, sophomore state champ from uh, two years ago, I believe. Took his first loss in the regional championship. He's kind of been in the mix of the rankings. I think I, I think he's. I had him start off way higher, <laughs> and he came down like not like ranked higher, but like uh, way higher. Yeah. Uh, Crew Farrell, thirty-two and one. I, I believe he was at one seventy at some point this year too. That would you know two one loss guys there. I mean, never overlook a Warren Central guy, Brenton Russell, uh, thirty-five and seven, another sophomore first round. Um, right off the right off the scale, that's gonna be hard. I mean, I don't know if those guys are cutting hard or not, but. You know, you're never going to have uh, – if you have Warren Central, you're not going to be sleeping on those guys. I mean, you have to get to the ticker rounds. You can't overlook them. Nope, nope. Coach uh, Courtney's going to have – he'll have his guy ready. He, he's not going to let him uh, – Courtney Duncan's not going to let those guys overlook a Warren Central guy. He's been saying his first rodeo. <laughs> nope. um, going down, you got Zach Huckabee from Perry Meridian, sophomore, uh, kind of surprise uh, regional champion. Coming in with a stellar nine losses, Charles Brown. From Hamilton Heights, senior thirty-five and eight, and then Wyatt Maiden and Nathan Powell, number eighteen and twenty-four, first round. Um, that's going to be an interesting quarter bracket. I mean, obviously Huckabee, and you know he's wrestling well at the right time, and you know you never know what's going to happen. You got a young guy that's clicking on all cylinders going into you know going into some big matches, and that's always a good thing to have. Yeah, um, Huckabee and Powell had wrestled this year at um, Team State. And Powell got a win there. <clears throat> Maiden's had some really good wins, 19 and 6. Uh, Nathan Powell's had some really uh, nice wins in there. I mean, six losses in that that schedule is going to be tough. So you look at that, and like you said, Huckabee's kind of clicking at the right time. He's got a good room, good partners. I'm sure he's getting to wrestle, uh, you know, Matthew Coombs and those guys every day. Yeah, that's a not, not a bad, uh, bad way to get prepared. Going down, you got another – Regional champ from Zionsville, Chase Wagner, tough sophomore. There's some young, some pretty good young guys there. Uh, Matthew Kamlank from Rushville, Gabe Bragg from Cathedral, <laughs> Andrew Stuck from Ron Colley. Um, Bragg and Stuck, those are guys that are gonna, you know, brag with a, they, they token 15 losses, but he's pretty, he's pretty solid. Um, you don't, I mean, you got a little bit of Catholic, the uh, Catholic uh, battle. So I don't know what side uh, Jesus is going to be on, but uh, hopefully. Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> but that, that should be a good match, a good uh, first round match. And, you know, Wagner's going to have to be ready. I mean, obviously, Cathedral's going to have their guys ready. They always wrestle well these last two weeks. Ron Colley's wrestling well right now. So, um, you know, obviously, Wagner's having a pretty solid year, but you're not going to, you can't overlook those guys in the ticket round because could, they could, uh, uh, get you real quick. Yeah, Chase Wagner having a really good sophomore year. Um, I think his record last year was a little bit closer to uh, 500. Um, we always knew he was really tough. I know he's right on the cusp of the rankings last year, but I mean, when you're wrestling those bigger weights and you're, you know, you're a freshman, it's a lot more difficult. I mean, I think it's a, a growing year. I always thought it was really cool. Like this year, like every year. Um, you know, Cathedral goes to the city tournament, which is in Marion County. They don't participate in Marion County. And Ron Cowley won the Marion County. So you can have two possible guys that were right in the mix at 150 or 160th here. Yeah. Uh, last quarter bracket, Charlie Eusen from East Central, 40-2. and two. Deshaun Turnor from Hamilton Southeastern. Clay Guerin from uh, Greenfield Central. And John Rushenberg from Bishop Chittard. Um, got a number 15 and 16 potential in the ticket round. Um, another weight class. That, that, so at least starting tonight, I, last night was such a long night. They, uh, looks like they separated pretty well here. Um, as far as rank guys. Yeah. Uh, Charlie Houston, uh, we, we can't talk about East central last night. If you didn't want to watch for three hours <laughs> and, uh, they wrestle a lot in Ohio. I know, um, He's had a really good year. I know the coaching staff's really high on him. That was a guy that they told me early on, you know, watch out for him. He, you know, he's going to make some noise. I know he took uh, a bad L to 
Cade Law at Team State. Like, Cade Law is obviously really tough, but I think it was a major. It was one of his losses. I don't know his other losses, too. But that uh, that opening match of Clay Guerin of uh, Greenfield Central, who's had some really nice wins as a sophomore, and John Rushenberg was at uh, Brownsburg, I believe, last year. And in their lineup, transferred to Bishop Tatar. That should be a, a pretty interesting first-round matchup. I thought so. I didn't want to say that, but I kind of thought, uh, <laughs> I was like, that name sounds familiar. 170. Um, let's go down just a little bit. Anthony Cashman, uh, Warren Central, real tough sophomore um, for Warren Central, 36 and 4. Luke Tinkle from Centerville, Nolan Buckman from Brebuff Jesuit, and Nolan Weaver from Rossville. Um, so you got freshman, sophomore, and junior right here uh you know cashman's having a real good year pretty solid he's had a lot of good uh off season uh mat uh, wins and you know battle with some good guys so he's gonna be ready to make uh make some noise here yeah uh, i thought that was one of the big things you know he put a lot of work in this summer you've seen him all out national stuff i know he wrestled ipo um i believe he was at fargo also mm-hmm I thought he did pretty well. Like his results, you know, maybe he did an All American or win IPO, but you know he had some nice wins. Uh, we kind of talked about it a little bit last night. Also, it's cool to see some of these smaller schools get in there with an opportunity. Um, you know, I don't know how big, but Buff Jesuit Preparatory Academy is. But twenty eight and three, he's gonna be in the. You know, got another guy. Got Nolan Weaver, Rossville, thirty and three freshman. That's gonna be a good one right off the bat. And then the winner, you know, possibly have Cashman. Yep. Uh, going down, you got. Uh, John, Josh Mobley, Batesville, Dante Hahn from Southport. Then you got number 12 and 13, Nuke Panola and J.J. Braun um, battling out. Another good good young young uh, middle to upper weight for Zionsville. So that, that should be a good uh, good match uh, first round. And then obviously there, Mobley most likely would be waiting him for the, the winner there in the ticket round. Uh, 800 students for Brebuff. Uh, that would be cool, man. You don't see a lot of uh... – Guys from Bluff Jesuit Preparatory Academy making it to the state finals. He said <clears throat> Salazar is the assistant coach. That would be a, a cool. I mean, <clears throat> you want to see those guys from different schools be represented in the Parade of Champions. Are they doing Parade of Champions before I say representing the Parade of Champions? Yes, yes, they're doing two different ones at each during each morning uh, Friday session, which is kind of weird, but I guess it is what it is. Don't get me started. Which on is that cool. One. I, I don't uh, have a popular man. opinion. I have the uh, I've been there, done that <laughs> too many times. Uh, opinion, but it, kids love it, so we can do it. <laughs> been the, it. It'd be the first day qualifier since your senior year of high school, Joe, nineteen ninety six. <laughs> nice. <laughs> nah, ninety seven. I graduated ninety seven. Come on, close man. I'm not that close. old. <laughs> Josh Mobley, uh, Batesville, having a real nice year, thirty four and three senior. Uh, Luke Panola, JJ Brown, that'll be a good one. Um, I don't have it in front of me. I'm sure they've wrestled at some point this year. I know they're a lot of the same stuff. Uh, they're both at Al Smith. Both <clears throat> I have a, my spreadsheet here. I can pull it up before I go any further. JJ Braun's won a lot of big matches for uh, Cathedral this year. Yeah, and, the, and both those teams wrestle pretty good schedules. You have a website. Mm-hmm. I just can't navigate off this. Or my window here goes off. <laughs> so. Luke Panola. Uh, JJ Braun has a win over Luke Panola 3-0 this year, so I know they had wrestled. So that'll be a, a good first round matchup, and it'll be like obviously those coaches are good at adjustments. You got two high level coaching staff, so and it'll be first match of the day, so or first match for those guys. Yep. Uh, bottom half of the bracket: Ryan Cass from Hamilton Southeastern, senior with only one loss. Jimmy Lacey from Hamilton Heights, seeing that team quite a bit. Uh, Jared. Barrett from Connersville, then number 20, Chase Gardner from Greenfield Central, um, number 7 and 20. Um, Greenfield Central has some sneaky good guys in there. I know they put a lot of time in the offseason, so that's going to be, you know. Dang, Devin Bieber throwing some shade at you. <laughs> you could be my son, Devin. Just think about that. <laughs> <laughs> Mike's here. Like, oh, yeah. I graduated like two years later. <laughs> but, um. Three, three or three, three or four. <laughs> uh, yeah, <clears throat> Greenfield Central's done a nice job. Like we said yesterday, it's, it's good to see them back in the tournament. Like they, they were one of the teams that unfortunately had a withdraw with COVID. So you want to see these guys get an opportunity. Uh, Chase Gardner's had some really good wins. Ryan Cast, uh, Penny Machine, you know, 
I know he has a lot of falls this year, 28 and one. That could be a pretty interesting matchup uh, in the ticket round if they both were to make it there. I don't want to look past anybody or disrespect anybody there. Yeah. And then the bottom half, bottom quarter, Clifton Johnson for the fight and Lou Silvermans of North Central, uh, Trevor Weekly, Western Boone, uh, Braden Tincher from Eastern Hancock, and then Braden Huber from East Central. Um, quite a uh, plethora of different schools that you usually don't see punching a lot of tickets to state. I mean, uh, East Central's been doing pretty good. North Central always has a pretty good team, but. Um, should be a pretty solid uh, quarter bracket there that, uh, you know, number 25, number, you got six, eight, nine from the semi-state, and I'm sure Huber is pretty solid also. Ryan Cast, uh, just go back, Ryan Cast beat Chase Gardner 7-4 this year. Mm. His only loss to Hayden Shepard of 5-3 overtime. That should be a good, I mean, you got 7-4 match. That's You can make some adjustments to keep that closer, make it a one takedown match. That's not, not too uh, out of the question. Clifton Johnson, I believe, uh, dropped a weight this year, too. I, I think he was up at 82 most of the year. Um, who's the North Central coach? Real good mustache, right? Yes, their one assistant has a real nice mustache. Mustache game strong. If that if that's not the state finals, then what are we doing? Yeah, I mean, you got you to gotta give him at least one free pass. We can have 225 wrestlers there. I don't care. <laughs> yep. You know they, they have uh, lots of heavyweight. That's all you know. Yeah. A lot of heavyweight and a real good dark mustache. Yes. You think he dies that thing? Oh, he has to. I think that, that you can't be that. That not. I mean, there, there's only certain ethnicities that have that kind of darkness of a uh, of black. So. <laughs> and we both married into that. Yes. Yes. <laughs> That'd be Rocco. Rocco can have that kind of mustache. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, Braden Tincher, Eastern Hancock, returned semi state qualifier last year as a sophomore. Uh, he had some pretty good results. I know he had a real tough match with uh, Cashman, I believe, right off the bat, first term of the year. Um, Clifton Johnson, obviously ranked pretty high. We think pretty highly of him. Mm-hmm. It's not going to be an easy match right off the bat with uh, Tincher and Huber. So uh, I'm not sure about the Western Boone kid. I haven't seen him a lot this year. So. Dang. <laughs> Salazar, I was born in 1982. He was graduated eighty three. I was born in eighty two. <laughs> nice. We won't talk about what year I was born. Um, <laughs> it's a couple of years before that. One eighty two. You got Kale Allball from Clinton Central. Jacob Skinner from Beach Grove. Mason Lewis from Shenandoah. T- Tommy Hannon from Bishop Ch- Ch- Chatard. Um, pretty solid quarter bracket. Uh, Hannon's not in the state rankings, but. Yarbar Yarbrough is in the semi-state rankings. Are you? Yeah. Yar- oh, yeah. Whatever. You guys can see it. <laughs> Allboro uh, from Clinton Central. I think I slept on that because after, you know, he's he's done really well. I went back and looked at some of his results. Um, yeah, that one slipped through. I mean, we, I mean, uh, Dustin talked about it last night. We didn't get a lot in Clinton Central uh, emails, <laughs> but man, he uh, he had a real good summer. He had some really good results, and then uh, obviously a regional champ. So. That one's on me, guys. Yep. Uh, Tommy Hannon, I know that said he's a real good football player, right? For Bishop Chittard, um, nineteen and three. Bishop Chittard's, uh, you know, kind of turned around their program a lot, right? They're they're starting. I don't know if they're turning around the program, but they have a lot of guys right in the mix. I know going into the city tournament, they were they were riding high. They thought that they were going to have a a real good showing there, and they did. Yeah. So yeah, they have quite a few guys here um, that are you know right in the mix to bunch of tickets to state uh going down did, you got number 10 Tommy Hannon and Russell they were talking about like they're both super good football players nice I'm trying to look at it uh, I don't remember yeah going down you got Luke Hansen from Ron Colley junior 31 and 2 Austin oh. McClure Westfield uh, took uh you know one versus four here you got 10 and 15 that should be a good uh good match right right off the bat then you got Jake Hasbrook from Cathedral and then or- Orland Foster from Connorsville uh, should be, you know, never want to underestimate a Hasbrook from Cathedral. But that's a that's a pretty tough quarter right there. Thank you, Mr. Hanson. It was Luke Hanson and uh, Hannon, both really good football players. I know that when they were they were getting ready to meet up, everyone was kind of saying like how good that both of them are at football and how good both of them are at wrestling. Nice. That's a good good little uh, you know 
those sports work together pretty well. I don't know if people figure that out yet. <laughs> yeah, they just did like an article about uh, guys that wrestled or playing in the Super Bowl. Aaron Donald, man. Yeah. Um, Luke Hansen, really good season. I know uh, he took a loss to Jake Simpson. I, I'd have to look and see his other losses too. That's a tough one right off the bat. McClure, McClure was up at 95 uh, at some point this year too. Mm-hmm. That's going to be a real good one right off the bat. Like, That's not the one you want to see? No, no, that's not. That's a tough one right there. And then, uh, yeah, like like you said, you never want to never count out of Hasbrook. Uh, I think, I believe his uncle, right? Matt Hasbrook, state champ. It's a, uh, um, All-American. Yeah. Real good. Pretty, uh, n- well, name is uh, synonymous with, uh, with Cathedral in wrestling. And, and the got- message board. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and that now you got the probably one of the just one in one of the deepest quarter brackets in the uh, in the semi state. You got Evan Tilton from Hamilton Heights Junior undefeated. The Phenom, according to uh, the Iron Bear, is Sean Wichard from Centerville. And um, going down, you got number eight and sixteen Vincent McDonald from Zionsville having a real good season. Then Porter Keevers from New Pal. So that is a brutal quarter bracket. 8, 12, 16. Uh, what's crazy is um I believe Tilton wrestled like 63 at uh at IPO. Mm-hmm. And I uh, wrestled uh, 95 at, at Al Smith. Who did? Yeah, uh, McDonald did. Maybe yeah. Him. Well, I mean like I suppose not that far in front of the season for him to be going up 20 weights, right? Yeah. It's 40 pins. That's a lot. 40 pins is a lot of falls. Um, that's going to be a good one off the bat. Porter Keevers and uh, Vincent McDonald. <clears throat> I believe Porter Keevers, he had signed to wrestle somewhere. Is he going to be at Wabash or uh, UND? Wabash, I believe, recently. When I put, I'm yeah, it was, it was pretty, uh, pretty recent. I know he had some nice wins at uh, IPO too. Porter Keever's coming in. I think he had missed a little bit of the middle of the season for injury, but it's a bit tough one right off the bat. Vincent McDonald gave uh, Gunnar Henry his only loss. We kind of talked about how good Gunnar Henry is doing in the Evansville preview. U of I, friend. I thought it was. I was wrong. <laughs> um, but the winner of that and have Tilton and undefeated 40 falls, man, that's pretty impressive. Yeah. yeah so that's I mean, only two of his matches. Uh, I believe they're pro – Pretty close matches. I haven't had my spreadsheet here. Let me pull it up. I know he had a, I know he had a couple tight ones with Trevor Curry eight seven and Jaquan East eight six two Fort Wayne guys. He doesn't want to go through Fort Wayne then. <laughs> Said he'd go through anywhere. Not. <laughs> um, so th- that'd be an interesting ticket round match. Um, whoever comes out of that first quarter bracket and then uh, Tilson. But this one looks like it's spread pretty evenly too with uh, rankings. Yeah, yeah. So um, going down, you got David Nash, East Central, Seth Stone from Noblesville, Mike Durham from from Warren Central, number twenty three, and then number six in the semi state, Jacob Jones from Sheridan. Hopefully, we finally figure out. There's a couple of Jacob Joneses in the in the state, and that's annoying <laughs> within uh, the database. <laughs> Um, David Nash, I know he spent some time in the rankings this year. Um, thirty nine and three. How about uh Sheridan, Jacob Jones getting there thirty eight and five, the the fighting dingo brigades, right? Yes, yes. You haven't heard from him for a while. We need to poke him. <laughs> Cupcake game must be strong, man. Yes. Indy Cup game. <laughs> Jacob J- Jaguar Jones. <laughs> nice. <laughs> yeah, there's a couple um, there's another J- there's like there's at least another one somewhere around that gets messed up in the database <laughs> screws up my darn database so yeah pretty good yeah. quarter bracket there that'll be uh yeah that would be interesting uh one ranked guy in there so kind of a toss-up mm-hmm. i mean semi-state did a good job in there yeah Howie knows what he's doing no we didn't track down howie for the show <laughs> so 195 i got a real good quarter bracket to start Oof. Uh, Max Broom, returning state qualifier from Hamilton Southeastern. Andrew Kemper from South Dearborn. Then you got two, another two more ranked guys. Sam Peoples from Ron Colley having a real good senior year. And then Grayson Harvey from Cathedral, returning uh, ticket rounder. Uh, so you got some three seniors, four seniors really, um, 
only one's going to be Russell next week. So that that's a tough quarter right there. Yeah, real tough quarter. Gracie and Harvey's had some nice wins this year. Um, I know he's had some some interesting losses, but I know he has wins over Roland Hammond and Greg Johnson. Um, and then he'll take a loss, and it'll be kind of just be a head scratcher. And so it's tough to rank rank those, you know, just the consistently consistency. Um, then you look at uh, Sam Peoples, another guy having a really good season. <clears throat> I know he's been in the rankings all year, start to finish. Uh, lost to Rowan Hammond, Jaden Dernow. So, you know, if you do the transitive property, it's going to be a really good match right off the top. Mm-hmm. And then the winner of that gets Max Broom, who's having a really nice season, having a really good career. Yeah, that, this is one of those, uh, you know, we haven't talked about touch on it very much about the team race here because it's going to be pretty close. You got Ron Kelly Cathedral, who are both in the mix there. Um, you know, you might, you're almost having a run. There's quite a few Ron Kelly Cathedral matches come, you know, in those early rounds. That's that's a lot of points. And, you know, blocking one of their guys from even earning any points and you get into states a huge, huge jump in team points. Well, and I think uh, that opens the door for maybe another team, someone else that's going to have some strong individuals going. Mm-hmm. Um, to, to jump in there if those guys are knocking each other out in the early rounds. Yep. I mean, I think Hamilton Southeastern has quite a few guys. Carmel has quite a few guys. Zionsville has some yeah. studs in there. Um, Perry's someone you can't sleep on. They're going to be ready. So it should be I – mean, East Central has some good kids. Um, they have some oh, horses. Yeah. I mean, they could have, you know, three or four – I mean, three three or four guys that are right in the mix to win semi-state titles. That, you win four semi-state titles, you'll, you'll be right there with a lot of points. That's how Ron Kelly won it a couple of years ago, right? Yeah, yeah, they had a bunch of champions, and then yeah, they didn't even win sectional or regional, but they had a bunch of champ- uh, heck. That's what happened in Fort Wayne with the uh, gym town yeah. guys. So yeah, um, going down. Speaking of East Central, you got Ryan Bovar turning state qualifier. Wyatt, Wyatt Woodall from Southmont. That's gonna be a tough first round match. Um, Woodall having a good year, but uh, did not have a good regional. Um, Greg Johnson from Arsenal Tech, and then Jacob Tweedy from from uh, New Pal. Uh, Johnson's had some decent wins um, this year for Arsenal Tech, and that first round match will be very interesting. Yeah, I think Johnson's a guy I feel like has been in school for a long time. I think I have had I've had him on the uh, watch list or in the the mix for the rankings for a while. Um, it'd be cool to see a city school punch a ticket. I believe their city school, right, Arsenal Tech. Yeah. Not, I don't think a lot of the city school. I mean, I don't know if you count Cathedral City School. Not a ton of the city schools uh, are punching tickets, right? Yeah. <clears throat> but Wildwood, that was a guy I've always been really high on. He's a sophomore. I was pretty high on his brother Riley also last year. I think um, I'd have to look at the regional and see who he lost to there or how, how that went for him. I think I was higher on him than how he was. Mm-hmm. Forfeit, he's pretty banged up. That That's unfortunate. I know he's had a lot of success at the age levels and then um, – that's going to be a tough one right off the bat. Ryan Bovard, you know, really good. So if he's injured and he's not 100%, that's going to be a tough tough match to get through. I mean, those guys are both ranked. Mm-hmm. But I, I think uh, going forward, why would Ella be a guy that we can look <clears throat> down the road and be like, oh, man, that guy's really, you know, a really good wrestler. Yeah. So I think his brother was a medalist last year, right? Uh, I think he was a qualifier. I don't know if he's a medalist. He might be. You probably would know better than me at times. Yeah, someone probably let's know. Some, it all blurs all together. It's starting yeah. to starting to get all fuzzy. Yeah, and I know. Uh, what was I gonna say? Uh, Greg Johnson. There's been a couple of Greg Johnsons around, so that doesn't help with <laughs> remembering names and I, I, how I feel. There's one up here in this area that was pretty solid. I think he's a qualifier for Wayne. Um, uh, yeah. Wyatt Waddell was a, a freshman sophomore champ with wins over MJ Norman, Will Clark, and Eli Henshaw. So, I, I mean, it just kind of speaks to the level of toughness that he is. But, I mean, being injured at this time of year is difficult because it just streamlines and everyone that uh, is still wrestling at this level is, you know, at least a level of uh, toughness, a degree of it's going to be a hard match. There's not a lot of layups anymore. Nope, not at all. Um, another first round, one versus four, uh, two ranked guys, number 16 and 18, Austin Hastings, Noblesville, Ron and Hammond from Perry. Um Chase Hamilton from Batesville, then Kyle Zickman from Frankfurt. So first round match, another ranked uh, matchup with a one versus a four. Roland Hammond loves to throw people too. Yes. He's a he's a big move guy. Uh, 
Austin Hastings, his coach can grow a pretty nice mustache too. Yeah, <laughs> nice. Um, that'd be a good one right off the bat. Uh, Chase Hamilton's had some nice uh, wins this year for Batesville. Um, I don't get to see a lot of Batesville, but I know that he had some some uh, good results. And sometimes you have to go off for results when you're doing the rankings. But uh, Ham's got 10 losses. I'd be willing to bet he's been in some 50-50 positions and that he's won and some 50-50 positions that he's lost. Yeah. Definitely. He definitely owns one of those I'd rather throw you than know you shirts, right? <laughs> yeah, for sure. I think he's living by that. So if you like uh, – Guys that lay it on the line and go for big moves, you might want to get there for that Austin Hastings Rowan Hammond match. Uh, last quarter bracket, Antav Jordan from Franklin Central, returning placer at 220, dropped down 26 and 1. Juwan Eccles from Anderson, uh, Luis Mariachi, Mariachi, Mariachi from Zionsville, and then Alex Dance from Greensburg. Obviously, Jordan's uh, the class of this quarter bracket. Uh, they said Hastings dad was state champ and he loves to throw too. Ooh, oh man. <laughs> I'm gonna I'll be checking that out from East Chicago on my flow account. Yes. <laughs> um yeah. Circle that one. Tavion Jordan, uh real tough, man. I think I don't know that, that I don't know if that's a good move or bad move, uh cutting down the weight class, but if he's able to and and he feels good there, I think he's right in the mix. Obviously we have him rates pretty high. Number five, number one in the semi state. Um I think he's a guy that could get hot and make a run. Man, <clears throat> Floyd Cent or Franklin Central, that article this earlier this year, just kind of stuff they dealt with in the program, not just like uh, the debt that they dealt with at the beginning of the year, which is incredibly hard, but uh, some of the, the family members and things like that and the, the coach's wife had passed away, and I think that just brought them tighter. But, man, they, they do a great job of producing top guys, especially guys up top, uh, heavyweights and – Looks like 95s and 220s. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that, that dropping down to uh, 195, what are we talking about, 220 here? And that's been one of our one of our uh, kind of running like things that we're talking about. 220 at Newcastle is just a cluster. <laughs> well, it's, <laughs> it's, it's a least. weight that you can run it a bunch of different ways. And, uh, you know, you could – a different guy could win every, every single time, which is yeah. interesting. It's always yeah. interesting when that – that makes for a fun weight, and it, it gives guys um, the opportunity to go out there and make it happen. It gives rankers you know? absolute big time headaches. <laughs> uh, you know it, what, what's you know what's uh, tough about it is that you go through the rankings and you look. I'm like, oh man, my best Newcastle guy is, you know, ten, and you know that's not fair to the Newcastle uh, semi state. But you, you kind of look and you look at a team like uh, Fort or semi state like Fort Wayne, who's got a lot of got two twenties that are really good and it's not fair to them to eliminate those guys either. Yeah. Yeah. This one's been one we've talked about quite a bit and it's just like, man, everyone's beating each other. No one's, you know, it's, it's been a weird weight class and to try to track and everything. And no one's really set themselves apart from that. So, you know, Jordan, you know, um, Franklin central always does a great job with, uh, their bigger guys. Um, and, I don't even know if they have anyone here, do they? No. But I mean <laughs> But they did have a they had Quentin Keese who's pretty solid too. So yeah. someone had to knock him out at some point. Yeah. Yeah, we went over one thirty two last night. You want to check about the last hour of the episode. <laughs> yeah, don't don't watch the full three hours unless you want to see a handsome triple B. Yes. Throwing exactly. it out with a backwards cat. Yes. So 220, Newcastle. You got Peyton Cross, Sheridan, 41 and 1. Aaron Butts from Perry Meridian. Levi DeGroat, Connorsville. Then Devin Kendricks from Mount Vernon. Fortville, real tough freshman. Um, taking some losses the past couple weeks, but he's, you know, he's pretty tough and did really well at LiPo. And so this should be, you know, you got Peyton Cross from Sheridan, 41 and 1. They haven't had a qualifier for quite a while. So. Um, should be an interesting, you know, quarter bracket here. Yeah. Uh, Aaron Butts was at Ron Cowley, I believe for a while. Now he's at Perry Meridian. That could be an interesting, um, four, one, 41 and one Peyton cross, uh, had a nice win over Charlie Irish to win a regional. Uh, again, I don't think Sheridan's very big either. I think they're pretty small, oh, yeah, they're real small. pretty small school. Uh, Devin Kendricks. Real tough freshman. I know that he's been in the rankings. I know he's a guy that, uh, you know, we were pretty high on. And I know he took two losses. He was, I, I believe, his 0-2 at um, Al Smith or pretty close to 0-2, which was interesting. I know 
But uh, you're right. It's taken a couple of losses the last couple of weeks. Just, um, I mean, it's tough being a freshman at, you know, 220 is not easy. Yeah. Um, going down, you got Justin Lewis, Ron Kale, Brenton Wood from Frankfurt, Josh Brown from Hamilton Heights, and Colton Roth from Lawrenceburg. So uh, Lewis is the only one with a ranking beside him. He's number four in the semi-state. But, again, like you said, this weight class has just been, I mean, yet a lot of losses in those guys. Obviously, the, the – uh, Ron Kali kid should probably wrestle a little bit better schedule than the others, but still a lot of losses in here that you don't know. I mean, whoever's hot, whoever's wrestling well, can come away with a state ticket. Yeah, Sean Slayman uh, said that's uh, who knocked out Quentin Keese was Justin Lewis, first round regional. Um, they went on to win a regional championship, put himself in a good position to advance. Um, but, I mean, it's going to be tough. I mean, Lawrence Burke, 33 and 7, is going to be tough. I know the Iron Bear is going to have his guy ready, Josh Brown, 32 and 7. So, but I know that Ron Colley's wrestled, that, that guy's probably got eight losses and they're all right in the mix of the state, obviously. I know he's on the uh, watch list. He's not ranked, right? We, I think no. he's been on the, the cusp of rankings. I, I believe he's like right on the outside on the watch list. Yeah. So, Lawrence Burke's always done good with big guys, too, especially those ones named Mason Pierce. Yeah, uh, the one that's wrestling for Michigan. Oh, yeah. Uh, last half bracket, you got Braden Rousey from East Central. Jacob Long from Noblesville. He's ranked 16th. Um, Jim Raschke from Zionsville. And then Greg Johnson, the Greg Johnson Warren Central version. <laughs> to add to more funness of uh, names and everything. So that should be, I mean... A lot of losses again in this court. Actually, the one of the least amount of losses of the four. Um, so this is going to be an, another pick em. Man, if you get all four of these guys, you might win. If you get all four of the qualifiers here, you might win pick ems <laughs> That's all I'll say. And, and you better go better go put some money at uh, in, in Vegas because you're pretty good. <laughs> it looks like Jacob Long uh, injury defaulted his last match at uh, semi-regionals also. Mm -hmm. So hopefully nothing too serious. Uh, he's really good. It's a tough matchup uh, for Braden Rouse. I mean, obviously, solid four. You're going to draw one. That's not the one out of your uh, your regional, but that's an interesting. Uh, a lot of injuries. I mean, hopefully these guys are able to go, and a, a, a week of rest is going to help out. Mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> Should, yeah, should be a pretty good quarter bracket there. Going down. Uh, last quarter bracket, Jackson Weingart from uh, Cathedral. 11 losses on a pretty good schedule. T uh, freshman that or sophomore that's you know going to keep getting better. Michael Henderson, Northeastern. Porter May from New Pal. And then Charlie Irish. Not of the Fighting Irish, but so Hamilton Southeastern. Uh, just another pick em quarter bracket with everyone with quite a few losses here. <laughs> Hence why yeah, I mean, this that weight class has been a disaster ranking-wise. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think uh, that could be one. Hamilton Southeastern and Cathedral could be battling out for a semi-state title. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, like Ron Colley could be looking to win a semi-state there and, and seal a semi-state title. So a lot of those fans are going to have to stay there and, you know, sweat it out to the end for the teams. But that could be huge, that Irish and uh, Weingard match. I know he's coming on right at the end. I know he's uh, wrestling a lot better than he did early on, uh, as told by his sectional and regional championship. Yes. And then um, – Charlie Irish has had a really good year. Yeah, so that should be – that's another – man, this whole weight class. Hence why this weight class has been just a disaster to rank all year. Um, heavyweight, you got Jose Smith from Cathedral. Sophomore, it's you know, starting to come uh, come around, which is kind of scary if you're uh, not a Cathedral wrestler or, or a Cathedral fan. Zayden Dunn from Southmont, Sebastian Collins, Centerville, and then Luke Schwartz from – Ron Colley, um, you know, Jose Smith having a good year, still a sophomore. You know, you got some seniors, you got three seniors in there that are kind of wanting to, you know, punch a ticket to state. And South Mountain always has some pretty good big guys. Dunn's not going to be a slouch. They wrestle a pretty solid schedule for being a smaller school. So that'll be an interesting, uh, you know, first round match there. Yeah, uh, I think Jose Smith's a, a really um, talented kid. He's a guy that's kind of came on too. I know he's had some. Uh, they've had a couple different heavyweights in there, but he, I know he has a win over Schwartz. I think six one. Mm -hmm. 
uh, early on. But, I mean, toss it out the window. Those guys are both going to be making adjustments. Those are high-level coaching staffs. So it would be really interesting. Going down, you got Big Mike Platinov from Westfield, who has wrestled about 20 significant matches this year. Uh, Jacob Etchin from Noblesville, real good. You know, I got six and 16 um, matchup right right away. Juan Camacho from New Pal and Alex Kemper from South Dearborn. Um, Platinov returning state seventh place finisher, I believe. So um, should be that should be a good, real good first round match there. Big Mike loves to grind out those uh, those tight overtime matches. If you're gonna wrestle with Big Mike, you better have some lungs because it's gonna go extra time. Mike likes getting the bonus time. He's he's you know he's there he's there for uh, he's getting paid by the hour. <laughs> yeah. Um, so that could be a good one off the bat. I know Jacob Eikenson's, uh I feel like they've wrestled a lot of the same guys. You know, mm-hmm. I bet Jacob Eikenson's probably wrestled um, uh, Don Burgett a dozen times this year. Yeah. Like I feel like uh, right in that mix. I mean, I don't know if that's true or not, but. I feel like those are the guys that are always kind of trading wins and losses. Let's see. Don yeah. Burgess wrestled him. Don Burgess had wrestled a ton of guys over there too. I only have one, I only have one notable win of uh, over Jacob Eikenson. So I could be wrong. Man. A lot yeah. of Anthony Justin there. Where's where's our – oh, I haven't updated that with all the new ones yet from, from, uh, from uh, the State Series. I'll have to add that. So that, that'd be a good one right off the bat. I think those guys, Luke Schwartz is a junior. Where is, oh, well. Is, it on, is, it, is he a seat on that? Yeah. We'll fix Thank that. you. Write that down. <laughs> Go ahead. So pre-order your, your preseason magazine for next year. He'll be in there, I'm sure. <laughs> um, the next quarter bracket, Jackson Goodall, uh, undefeated uh, Lawrenceburg, 19-0. They they've had a pretty good run of like you said getting some pretty good big guys with uh you know Mason Paris and those guys I don't know if Mason ever makes it down there and rolls with those guys but I'm sure yeah the only guy I can send one time this year at the duel yeah. I said I feel like those guys are all in the mix they all like there's like an area in that northern uh, what is that northeastern Indy area that they wrestle a bunch I don't know if that's yeah. northeastern it's northern Indy uh, you got Westfield and. Zionsville and Hamilton Southeastern, Fishers, Noblesville, those guys those guys like to beat up on each other. Um so we're- And good all have Paris Green from Warren Central, a real talented sophomore. I know he was in the mix last year. I know he has a, a good amount, like ten losses a lot. Um I think he had like a couple like twelve, thirteen losses last year, but real tough, real dangerous wrestler. I know he wrestles a lot. And then you'll have Hunter Branham, I, I believe he's ranked, right? From uh Frankton. Yeah. Um, Branham's and, 17th, uh, 26 and five. And then, uh, Don Burgett, uh, really good freshman, sophomore champ, I believe. Uh, real talented guy took, I think he'd taken his first two losses in the state tournament or he had one right before the state tournament. You have to bring up these rankings. No, I took one at conference, took one of the finals of conference to Leighton Jones, three, one, and then took one of the regional championship to big Mike one zero. Oh, big Mike. Not not overtime, not overtime. <laughs> so, Jeez. come on, uh, real dangerous wrestler. Um, I'm sure that I know his coach is in here. I think that he'll uh, he'll be in the mix for a medal again. Like not not the deepest weight, but this not a weight that a lot of people are going to want to see Friday night at the state finals either. You're talking. I mean, we're not done. We got one more quarter bracket, but you know, uh, Burgett possibly, Big Mike, Schwartz or Hosa. That's gonna be a tough uh, tough go. Yeah, it is. Uh, last quarter bracket, uh, Andrew Just, uh, Franklin Central, having a deceivingly uh, 11 losses. I know he's he's wrestled a lot of good guys and battled with them, had some close win- close losses, close wins. Chase Sutherland from Hagerstown, uh, Jack Milligan from Carmel, and then Makai Watts from North Central. Um, so you got three ranked guys. You got nine, 22, and 23. So real good quarter bracket to finish off here. Yeah, I'd probably put uh... – I know, uh, I know we talked about it, but man, just uh, wrestled Dom Burgett a ton this year. So his 11 losses, I'm sure that he got a good amount of those to Dom, which is no slouch. We, we talked about how good he is just Two, before. Uh, three, only three of his losses. He's had f- three of his losses are to just, uh, 
or three, three of just losses are to uh, to Burgett. Burgett. Burgett has wrestled Milligan one, two, three, four times. He's wrestled Platinov one, two, three, four times. Or actually, he's wrestled Milligan five times. Dude, he's only wrestled like six guys, six every guys this year, <laughs> from what I can yeah. gather. <laughs> Milligan Watson be good right off the bat. Uh, Watson just was like a, a two one, I believe, right outs. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, um, the just the just beat Watts or was it, it was real close, wasn't it? I think it was real close, two one. Yeah. Yeah, that was a. I do not have. Yeah, two one tiebreakers that uh, Mackay won, and then he just lost two one match to. Jose Smith. So yeah, I mean, there's, that's going to be a close one right there, right off the bat. And, um, yeah, here's just a handful of his losses. Leighton Jones, five, two, Makai Watts, tiebreaker, Platinoff, five, two, Platinoff, three, two, Don Burgett fall, Don Burgett, three, one, Don Burgett fall, Eli Smith, two, one, Colin Corbin fall. Jeez. Yeah. So that, there's some good matches in there. Um, so pretty wide open weight class. A lot of these guys have beat up on each other, um, all year long and should be, you know, this, like you said, this is not a f- one you want to draw Friday night um, or Friday morning, actually, technically, for heavyweights to wrestle. No. So, you ready for Fort Wayne? We'll save the best for last. Let's go. Let's go. Okay. One oh. We just put, you know, we just put like a uh, basically an eight-hour day work day in these uh these shows this week. We got yeah. one, we got some more. Yeah, got more in us. We got one more in us. Okay, one oh six. Jalen May from uh, Peru having a real good sophomore year. Pretty tough. The only one that beat a state champion last year. Um, Ashton Jackson. Ashton Jackson. So, um, you got Quentin Keene from Winchester. Drew Walden from DeKalb. And Byron Olivia from Northside. So you got an 8-25 and 25 there. Uh, May, his dad was Nick May from Peru. who's a state runner-up. I think he lost to this Reese Humphrey guy. I don't know. So I remember they both had real curly hair. Yes. Reese Humphrey and May. Yeah. Yeah. So pretty good quarter bracket here. Um, Walden was out most of the season with an injury and came back and having a pretty solid uh, state run here for DeKalb. I know that. I know he's had some, he has, you know, 10, 10 wins, but he probably would have been in the rankings had he been at least semi-state rankings had he wrestled a full season. Yeah, uh, Jalen May is super tough. Uh, lost to Gavin Gendrus in the semifinals with Al Smith, and then took two losses up a weight at uh, at IHSWCA. Yeah, he uh, lost to Jalen Lewis at 120 and lost to one of the Ash Twins at 13. But real tough at six. Uh, Byron Oliveira. I mean, I feel like another guy that's been in the mix for a long time. Uh, Four way north side. That'll be a good one right off the bat. Mm-hmm. Uh, going down, you got Levi Johns from Bluffton, freshman, 36 and 0. Jordan Crick from North Miami, Kayla Blackburn from Carroll, and Keelan Fuller from East Noble. So, a little bit of personal uh, influence on this one, but I know uh, Fuller beat Blackburn at our when we dueled them. As he's Fuller's tough, he's kind of funky and puts you in bad positions. Um, that you're not used to being in. So that should be a good rematch right there. And then um, we've also wrestled Johns. Johns is real good. Pretty tough. Um, so real good freshman uh, for Bluffton, 36-0, looking to punch his ticket and might be one of the favorites to win it here. Yeah, I think that Johns and uh, Johns and May match could be really good in the semis. I know Johns had an awesome match with Ocampo. Uh, what was that? That was, not, that was just a re- regular Bill uh, tournament, right? Not Wild Bill. Yeah, in the final, the normal, that wild bill. Bill. Um, the normal bill. Yeah. Um, but 36 and 0 freshman. Uh, that was like, what was that? Right outs. Yeah. We went to right outs and I think, and he wrote out Ocampo, um, kind of give Ocampo a little bit of a, of a, of a pass on that because she wrestled at the girls regional the night before had to make weight. No, um, had to still make scratch weight or not really scratch weight. It was plus two. Um, they, I know our girls didn't get back till close to midnight after midnight. And then he has to get up, you know, getting up early, weigh in, wrestle a long day of a tournament. So kind of give her a little bit of a pass on that one um, as far as what um, what she can, you know, as far as that win, you know, as a tiebreaker, she kind of just gassed. And I'm pretty positive she's in, usually in pretty good shape. But 
wrestling a lot of matches in a two day span can kind of do that to you. Oh yeah, I'm sure. Like a lot of <clears throat> just back to back to back, and then she was doubling up. So that was yeah. pretty impressive still. Yeah. Um, going down last the next uh, quarter bracket, Cameron Straw from Angola have a real good freshman season. Ethan Kenfane from Homestead, Benton Knable from Western, another good lightweight for Western. Then Aiden Bollinger from Delta. So it should be uh, Bollinger having a real good freshman year. A, couple, a lot of young guys here that are. Uh, it's gonna be a good good quarter bracket here. Yeah, I think that Knable uh, from Western and Delta match uh, Bollinger right off the bat. That's gonna be a real real talented match. Uh, Straw forty three and two. I ha I don't think I don't even know he might have been in the watch list, but I think I don't know he was very high. Um, so I kind of slept on that, but he'll have an opportunity to, to punch his ticket after winning a pretty good regional. Yeah, he lost to a Smedley from from uh, Belmont and Caleb Salazar, so two solid losses there for him. Yeah. And then you got uh, Juliana Ocampo from New Haven, freshman. She's having a pretty good year. Um, then Alex Moyer from Jimtown, Daniel Moore from Jay County, and Braden Raber from Maconaqua. Um, seen – Everyone but Moyer, personally. I know. I mean, we haven't wrestled Ocampo, but I know we know she's. I know she's pretty tough. Uh, wrestle against Moore. He's a tough, tough uh, junior. You got junior up at, at a weight like that. He's kind of big. Um, obviously, Jay County has a lot of really good lightweights, and then Braden Raver wrestled him at the Wild Bill, <laughs> and he he's kind of sneaky good. He is pretty solid, and you know it's that that's gonna be an interesting quarter bracket. Um, you know, I think Moore and Raver are gonna be able to give Ocampo a pretty good match, especially if they're a little bit bigger. Um, so that, that'll be a good, you know, there's going to be a lot of pressure on everyone in that match, you know, being as being able to punch your ticket to be the potentially the second uh, state qualifier as a girl. Um, a lot of pressure, a lot of pressure on these I know, 14, um, 15 year old kids. <laughs> I know Joe Stanley had told me early on that uh, he, he thought Ocampo could medal this year. Yeah. And, uh, early on when he was telling me, I thought he was talking about Crawl because I think Crawl and Evan had wrestled at um, uh, Middle School State last year. And he's like, no, Campbell's a real deal. You know, 32-2 and two freshman. Um, her two losses, one to Rio, who's incredibly tough uh, down in Evansville, and the other one to Johns and Rideouts. Um, I think that, you know, not to look past anybody, but, you know, I think she's looking not only to, like, be – to qualify, but I think I would be willing to bet she's looking to make a medal. Yeah. And if, you know, possibly, I know we talked about it last night, like how interesting would it be if you get a crawl, Ocampo rematch from Girl State, you know, a Friday night possibility match, you know? Yeah. Yeah, that should be, um, you know, the Moore and Raver will be tough opponents, and that's going to be it's gonna be an interesting quarter, quarter bracket there. Um, yeah. 113, you got Cody Rollis from Jay County, returning state qualifier. Matt Sen from Fairfield. Jane English from Columbia City. And then number 13, Wyatt Davis from Rochester. So you got 11 and 13, 3 and 4 in the semi-state in the ticket round. Yeah, um, Wyatt Davis having a real good year. I know he took a loss to Tishner at Northmont. Am I taking, did he take two losses to Tishner at Northmont? Um, and then he took a loss to the regional. No, he only took one. But... That could be a really good ticket round match. I know Rochester has a lot of uh, high end guys, so you're you're looking at more of a, you know a team that's looking for a semi state title. But Jay County's gonna be in the mix too. Cody Rallis, single loss this year. That'll be an interesting ticket round match if they can both get there. Yeah, Davis's all three losses are to Tishner, 10-2, 18-6, and eight two at regional. So yeah, and so. I think uh, Campo's sister just said that she wrestled three days in a row. So not just two days, three days in a row of making weight and making it at 108. So that's making weight. And I don't yeah. think she's like, she's not like overly big, but you still got to make weight and do it back to back to back without any allowance. That's not fun. And yeah, so. You paid Nick. Nick said, how do you pronounce it? Is oh. it Rallis, Rollis, or Rolls? I said, Nick is the pig, man. Let him, let him do his yeah. thing. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> Interesting quarter bracket here. Braylon Meyer from DeKalb, sophomore, regional champ. Bowen Keith, uh, number six and ten in the semi-state. Kane Fowler from Cass. Then the Jacob, the Jaguar, Jones from Garrett. Um, Meyer, Meyer was at 106 most of the year, then got bumped up by uh, by um, who's the other guy? Uh, 
Walden, and then ends up winning winning uh, regional and actually putting himself in a pretty solid spot to maybe punch a ticket to state there. <laughs> yeah, Keith Bowen's tough though um, yeah. for Cowan, twenty two and six uh, sophomore. Cowan's done a really nice job. Mm-hmm. So that'll be an interesting match right off the bat. Uh, the Jaguar, obviously. I didn't know that was the name, but I like it. <laughs> you know, you know, Garrett's been all over the place. Got Al Smith, Kane Fowler. I know he took a loss to Michael Cunningham and uh, Northmont at the Twin Lakes uh, uh, Invitational. So I know he's tough for Lewis Cass. Lewis Cass used to be at our semi state, so I, I almost put him in our semi state rankings on accident. <laughs> nice. Yeah, they just moved over a couple years ago. Uh, going down, you got Tanner Tishner, uh, undefeated sophomore, returning state placer, was, re- was semi state champ last year, real tough. Solomon Barnum from Huntington North, Josh Corona, probably not very, very uh, popular right these days. Uh, and then Caden Smitley from uh, Norwell. Norwell has a real solid team. Not the draw you really wanted there. Tishner's pretty legit. I'm going to tell you, that just went right over my head because I was like, Corona, like they don't like uh, alcohol out there no more. <laughs> so caught me off balance. We've been calling it COVID for so long now. Yeah. Yes. Uh, yeah. Tishner's really good. Um, I don't. I didn't see. I mean, he. I, I would assume. I mean, like that match with Doster would probably be pretty solid in the the semis. We'll talk about that in a second. But he's a guy that could place really high for the semi state, and you know, give Fort Wayne some real good uh, bonus points, get him back on track, take it back. Yeah, to back be, in the day, yeah, and he's makes tough. Fort Wayne um, the power again. He was right. I mean, he was winning in the quarterfinals on Saturday morning last year, and then uh, he was kick. He was up like five zero, and then end up getting pinned. Thing in the second period so he's he's right there he's wrestled a lot of the tough best guys in the state so he's tough Ian and he Jackson. wrestles a lot yeah he, he you know like he's out there you know was fourth at ipo you know he's out there wrestling a ton of matches mm-hmm. yeah going down you got easton doster from new haven colin schaefer from peru cole stuffle from from uh yorktown and Callan trex from northwood uh, Doster having a real good freshman year. His only losses to Tishner. Um, he's tough. He's a good size, 13 pounder, and um, he's one to watch out for. Um, New Haven obviously has a couple pretty good, good uh, wrestlers down low. Yeah, I think uh, that'll be an interesting one right off the bat with uh, Schaefer, a senior at uh, 13. I mean, obviously, he has some pretty good partners too. Stuffles had a really good sophomore year. I know uh, Yorktown. Those guys have been uh, they've been looking really good. I think that uh, Stevenson's doing a really nice job there. So, yeah. And and Tishner, one thing, um, I know Tishner's wrestled a lot in the offseason. He was wrestling at 106 a lot in the offseason, and we had him down that one at six, and then all of a sudden they said there he's going to go t- 13, um, which helps them at 106. Knable's pretty t- good too. So, got a, another 120, Aaron De La Luz from Jimtown, regional champ. Uh, Peyton Bowlin from Oak Hill. That should be a real good match right there, right off the bat. Two seniors. Then yeah, Carter Overby from Yorktown. Then Elliot Cornwell from Dwanger. Cornwell's been right there the past couple years to qualify for state. He's pretty tough. Um, I know he gives him and uh, Hayden Brady have some pretty good matches. Um, that it, it, He's been so close to beating Brady, just can't. It's one of those crazy things. It's one of those things you're watching like, God, oh my goodness. You know, like, he gets so close. Um, but that's a good, going to be a solid quarter bracket. Um, Cornwell's been the ticket around the past two years. So hope, I mean, you're kind of hoping for that. I mean, you're gonna have a senior qualifying, you know, obviously you got to root for a little bit of the Carroll regional guys. All four of those guys are senior, right? Yeah. Um, which is interesting. I know, uh, Caleb is real high on D D La Luz. I think he was up at 26 last year or 32 came down and wrestling more natural weight. Uh, Peyton Bowen's a guy that's been in the mix for a long time. I know. He's been on the watch list. He's a guy I have to look for all the time because we don't we don't delete anyone that's not a senior off the watch list. Once you're on the watch list, you're on the watch list forever. So um, I know he's always kind of been moving around. Uh, Overby is another guy like that too that's you know been around for a long time, been on the watch list, uh, maybe been in the rankings a little bit. And Cornwall has been in the rankings, uh, but you're right, he just hasn't kind of found a way to punch through. I don't have his draw every year draw in front of me, but when you're Constantly not putting yourself in the position to be a regional champ. You, you kind of get those tough draws, but it looks like this year kind of navigated it, and now he's got to go out there and, and make it happen. Yeah, he was – his sophomore year, he was winning. He was – I can't remember I can't remember who he wrestled, but then he 
end up getting like uh, Pearson and pinned. Then last year, I believe he lost to um, Yorktown kid that's at um, Brabender. He lost to Brabender. Anthony Martin, that's who he is, went wrestling from Western. Uh, that sounds well, potentially 328. Correct. Yeah, and he was winning that match. He was dominating. That's, you know, that was heartbreaking to see a kid, you know, wrestling well. And he's a pretty nice kid, so hopefully he gets that, you know, I'm going to give a little bit of rooting for him. Um, he's been right there. So going down, you got Ethan Holloway from Rochester. Really tough uh, junior. I know he last year he lost a real close one to Brady in the ticket round. Mason Chase, Bicalb. Aiden Sanderson from Columbia City and Neil Mosier from Delta. So it should be a that 15 and 19 match right there is going to be a pretty good uh, quarterfinal. Yeah, that's going to be tough, man. Uh, Neil Mosier's had a really nice year. Um, <clears throat> I know he had a loss to Dylan Tom at uh, Team State. He bumped up, lost to Ike. I mean, there's no shame in that. Obviously, Ike's really talented. Mm -hmm. uh, Holloway at 38 no. It's going to be a, a really good ticket round match with a couple teams that are looking to make a, a team run there. I mean, I don't know if, if those teams are going to have enough. I know that they have some really – Western has some pretty tough draws, um, I know, up top. So I don't know how their team's going to shake out. But it's going to be a close team race, I think. And if Rochester or Delta can kind of pull some of those guys through, maybe give them a little bit clearer path. Yep. Yeah, team race is going to be interesting. I don't even – I have no clue. I can't even you, – You're there's so many – uh, landmines in there that you're not sure who's going to be able to come out. This is another good, uh, pretty solid quarter bracket. And the, the next one's even better. Hayden Brady, uh, Tay Curtis first round. Um, you know, Curtis, obviously his brother is pretty good and he's, he's getting better each week, has some good practice partners. So that's one I know Brady's not going to overlook. Uh, Brody Hagwood from Prairie Heights and then Ty Lisner from Western. Lisner was at uh, Fishers last year and having a real, pretty solid season, has some solid wins. Um, you know, that's, Oh, I know he's. I think they eh, they didn't wrestle, did they? Um, sh should be a you know good quarter bracket there. Um, three semi state ranked guys. Yeah, uh, I think Curtis kind of had like a, a rough one with uh, trying to fit in that lineup. All those guys for Jay County are kind of around the same weight, and just kind of where you can fit in. I know there was some talk of him trying to get to six at some point, but I mean it's hard. We talked about it with some of those other teams, and when you're so deep and you're in those areas, you got to kind of get where you can get in. Um, not probably not the draw he wanted, but there's not a lot of easy draws um, coming in as a four. I mean, Brady's incredibly tough. I think uh, I I had him last year as a medalist. Uh, I think he was upset Friday night. I think he had Anthony Ball, which is a, a back and forth match. I mean, he's a guy that can wrestle with anybody in the state. You know, it's just getting over that hump. You hope that he doesn't get that um, that anxiety of getting down there and saying I had to punt, I have to get a medal, I have to punt. You know. I think he needs to go out there and wrestle loose and do his thing. He can wrestle with anybody. I, he, another guy that wrestles a ton every year, yep. always on the mat. You always see the results, and he's right there with everybody. Yeah, so. Uh, Hagwood and Lisner would be a good one, too. Hagwood, uh, they're, they're twins, right? Yeah, the 32 is the one that had a real good uh, Al Smith. Prairie High is going to have – those guys would be really good for them going forward. It is like doubling up hay brothers. For you. You need any hail, a bay hailed. Hey, bailed. I can't speak tonight. <laughs> hey, bailed. It's, it's been a long week. It's been yeah, a long yes, week. Yes, it has. So, uh, next quarter bracket. Hey, we're, 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 we're Fort Wayne. We have like, <laughs> as I, I think it was uh, Sprunger said, yeah, we have like 10 state qual uh, placers in the whole semi state, and they have to draw each other in the for, in the ticket round. Uh, Ike Rubel, um, Bryce Clark, first round, Northeast. Uh, eight battle. Then you got Jared Brooks and Isaiah Kramer Kamer from uh, Fremont. Brooks is a two-time state placer. Uh, placed as a freshman and junior. Uh, sophomore year, he was hurt. Ended up, you know, he wrestled, but wasn't 100%. So he's going to be – him and Rubel, that should be – I mean, Brooks is pretty solid. He's they, they both have some medals. That's one, you, you know, Belmont's looking at like, oh, geez, that's not who I wanted to draw there. Yeah, I think um... – I mean, if you're Ike, you're, you're looking. I mean, obviously, you don't want that in the tick around. But that's a guy that you probably – you're looking to win a state title. Like, he wants to finish his career at Belmont with a state championship, uh, as he should, right? Yeah. I know he uh, – Brooks beat him as a freshman yep. in the semi-state for a championship. Yes. Um, <clears throat> Bryce Clark, was he at six a little bit this year? I know yeah, he, he was ranked at six, six for a little three. bit. Yeah. 
jumped up a couple weight classes. Uh, better for him, probably getting better as the season goes on. Not not the draw again, like 120. I know we said it yesterday, but uh, 120 is at Evansville. But uh, four wins, 120 is really good. Yeah, and that's there's not a lot. Of, if you're four, I mean, it's tough because you're going to draw a really talented, uh, whether Brady or Rubel or Holloway or De La Luz. So pretty difficult. Yep, 126. Was Brady and uh, was Brady and Ike in the semis last year too? Yes. Man, that's gonna be. I mean, one twenty across the state's just loaded. So, um, you know, a two is not gonna be. I mean, someone like Brady is definitely gonna be a. You know, there, there's gonna be three other Brady level guys at number three for in the other semi states. So, oh yeah. So, so well, number two, two doesn't make anything any easier. Getting second at uh, at semi state doesn't make anything easier at 120. <laughs> no, I think uh, and all those guys are, you know, I don't and obviously I don't have a crystal ball in front of me. I don't know what the draw is going to be and I don't know who's going to qualify, but like those guys could all wrestle with anybody. Like and that's like the really cool thing is like those guys can wrestle with anybody in the state. It's just you know how are you going to go out and perform on the on the stage? Yeah. So going down 126. Or up, I guess. Uh, Xander Hort, Cherubusco, uh, regional champ. Blake Lugabell from Belmont. Griffin Stanley from North Miami. And then Keegan Schleyball from Lakeland. Um, only one guy with some, a ranking beside him. That's Schleyball from Lakeland. So that's going to be, um, you know, got potential uh, NECC battle in the ticket round there. But Lugabell is going to be battle tested and, you know, have pretty decent partners at Belmont. So that should be a pretty good uh, quarter bracket there. Yeah, I, I think so too. Um, again, like Belmont's gonna be looking to make a run. They're gonna need some uh, some guys to come through. I mean, I'm sure they didn't think Luganville would, would have been a four. I know that's a, I think that he was pretty high, but uh, yeah, I, I, I think De- Dennis is right. It's a good draw for uh, Keegan Schlaubach. I, I don't know how to say that, but Schleyball. but Schleyball. 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 But that'd be an interesting matchup. That that whole quarter. Uh, for me to go in here and say I know uh, I've seen a lot of Cherubusco or North Miami wrestling, I would be lying. Or Lakeland. So, <laughs> yeah, yes. Or Lakeland. Yeah. So going down, you got Jake County's Tony Wood, returning qualifier, having a real good year. Uh, Jake Heisler from Homestead. Mikey Calamani, number 22, from Jimtown. And then uh, Aiden Robb from Western. If you uh, The Calamani name was pretty popular back in the mid to late 90s. I know I wrestled, I don't know if it was dad or uncle, but um, so that's a pretty popular name in the uh gym town area so that should be a good uh take around match come on has some good solid wins this year yeah tony woods uh incredibly tough man I'm, I'm glad that we finally got his ranking right right going into sectional and not his ranking but his weight right um he's a guy that can wrestle with anybody in the state also i know he's been up i think he took a loss at 38 uh team state kind of bumping around um Kilimani had a really good al smith Aiden Robb, again, Western's going to need some big points. That, that's a huge one right off the bat. And then the winner gets Tony Woods. It's probably not the, the champ you want it there. Uh, I mean, you don't want Sprague either. Yeah. So. Yeah. But I'm glad that Sprague and, uh, and Wood are on opposite sides. Yeah, they had a real good match at, at the Carroll Super Duel. So, um, you know, it was a 1-0 match and some good scramble. So that should be very interesting to see if, if they meet up in the finals again. Yeah, those guys uh, – those guys are both really good. I'm, I'm expecting both those guys to probably get pretty high medals at coming out of Fort Wayne. Yeah. So that means that they might go home in the ticket round. Who knows? Yeah. That would be terrible. So the bottom half of the bracket, Aaron Swingo from Rochester, Isaiah McHugh from Angola, Xavier uh, Garrett from Bishop Dwinger, and then Gavin Cook from Adam Central. I know uh, you got three and eight from the uh, semi-state. I mean, Hughes, one that's had some good wins over the years. Actually, he's up a couple weights. He was at 113 last year. Um, had some weight issues. Did he miss weight last year at the semi-state? No, he, I think, I think he didn't make weight at sectional or regional. Uh, McHugh did. Uh, I'm pretty positive. Cook's had a real good year for Adam Central. But, so this should be, this is kind of a, uh, kind of a pick I'm here and you're looking at Adam Central. Adam Central is a team that might be able to, you know, make a run at a semi-state tell they have two or three guys that are right in the mix for to be in the finals and win it and then you got cook here with a solid draw 
Yeah, and, and Cook did some time up at 32 um, before Allman came back. Had some good wins. That that that's gonna be an interesting match right off the bat with uh, Swago and McHugh. Um, but, but last year missing weight's tough. The, I think. But man, you're you're talking about a guy that can wrestle with a lot of people. Uh, I've always thought he's really talented. But uh, the winner of that opening round gets the winner of uh, Garrett and Cook, and I think Cook's really good too. So that that could be a, you know. Right off the bat, you're really happy you won that first round, but then you know you get a really another really tough one to ticket around. Yeah. And then the last quarter bracket, Aiden Sprague had a good article on him this week. Um, number three in the states, number one in the semi state, Devin Adkins from Oak Hill, Jaden Jett from Cowan, and then Tanner McMain from the Garrett Rare Rotors, the Mighty Rare Rotors, Roll Big Train, RBT. <laughs> I'll, I'll say all the trance. <laughs> <laughs> may have heard them a few times in my life. So uh, Sprague's pretty darn good, and he's having a real good senior year. Yeah, he, he's really good. And I, I think we started off with him uh, pretty high. I think he played – he's a football player too, right? Yeah. I think he uh, – I had him pretty – I thought he was going to be a little bit heavier. Got down to 26. He's going to be right in the mix for a title too. Um, still undefeated. Um, he hasn't had the opportunity to see Vargo or um, Frazier this year. But I'm sure he's right there with those guys, you know. Mm -hmm. Just depends on who shows up next weekend or even he had to get through this weekend. Jaden Jett, real cool name. Jaden Jett's had some really nice wins. He had a real nice win over Waylon Frazee early on. Like I said, Cowan's doing a really good job of uh, building a program over there. Yeah, he's only had two losses, uh, overtime to Justin Boone from Yorktown and then uh, uh, 7-5 to Gavin Cook. So 132. Starting out, Nathan Hauser Homestead, senior, 30 and 4. Uh, Tegan Klaus from West Noble. Ali Turner from Eastbrook. And then Logan Ullman, a returning state qualifier from Adams Central. Uh, you got number 5 and 6 in the semi state. Ullman's number 22. I know Ullman was out for most of the season, so that should be a good uh, ticket round match. I know they rest, those two schools wrestled, but I do not know if those two wrestled each other. So. Go ahead and talk, and I'll see if I can figure that out. <laughs> oh, I was going to pull it up, too. Um, yeah, Ullman, I mean, missing any time in the season is going to be hard. Uh, coming back, got 20 matches under his belt. Where, you know, Hauser's going to have 34. Those guys can't look past those first-round matches, but that could be a really good ticket-round match. And a Homestead's looking to uh, get some guys. Oberlin said that Hauser was out ah, that match. So, well, then just ignore me. I was just right on that. So, yeah, I didn't think they wrestled, but that could be a, gonna... that, that'd be an interesting one. Hauser got four losses, uh, and they they wrestle a pretty solid schedule too. They're they're all over the state. Yeah, so that should be you know a good quarter bracket right there. Uh, going down, you got Jasper Graber, <laughs> name synonymous with Northridge, Hayden Williams, Garrett, Ethan Riley from uh, Jay County, then Tyson Kendall from Oak Hill. Riley was a state qualifier two years ago. Um, so he's spent some time at 126, thought he might go 120 and now he's up at 32. So, um, that's going to be interesting. I'm not, I, I know he's not going to be a big 32, but uh, he's obviously going to be pretty solid. And those eight losses are some pretty good, solid losses there. Oh yeah. And I think it's probably eight losses at probably three different weight classes, right? Yeah. Um, uh, Nice shout out for Hayden Williams. He just started wrestling two years ago at the semi state with an opportunity to, you know, if you, you get there, you have an opportunity to go to state finals. Yep. I mean, those are guys that wish they were wrestling this weekend, too. I mean, it's always pretty interesting. There's going to be a lot of people that, uh, I bet some of those guys at Morville wish they had an opportunity to wrestle semi state this weekend, or a <laughs> lot of guys. I mean, half the field's done now. Yeah. Uh, Jasper Graber, real tough. Obviously, a tough family out of Northridge, 21 and 4. We had to see him at Al Smith, had a really good uh, tournament there. I mean, not really good in the sense that he won it, but had a lot of tough weight matches and won, won a lot of those. Yep. Uh, going down, bottom half of the bracket, Landon Birch of Bluffton, returning state placer, Nathan Kopp from Madison Grand, Aiden Hawkins from Fremont, and Ben Pennington from Leo. Birch, uh, only one loss. That's to Tony Wood. I'm pretty positive. So I'm um, having a real good year. I know he gave Man. Um, Chef a really good Gra match last year. Graber got four losses. Two of them are to Zara Walker. I don't know if I didn't see a third one. Maybe to Zara Walker also. And then one to Logan Stuckman. 
Uh, East Chicago semi stay guys. Yeah, let's see. Sorry about that. Yep, I want to see. Yeah, Landon Perks. Yeah. 30, 30 and one. Uh, Nathan Kopp and Madison Grant, 24 and 11, 13 senior or uh, junior. Aiden Hawkins of Fremont and Ben Pendleton. Um, Landon Birch is really good. I, I think that's another guy to be right in the mix. Um, it seems like Fort Wayne's kind of uh, uh, Kilimani's beat him this year too. Mm-hmm. Um, it seems like uh, Fort Wayne's not as many death draws as it normally is so far. Yeah. I, mean, I know there's one coming up. Yeah. But uh, it seems like the, the better guys are going to be able to make an appearance, which is going to be good for you guys semi-state overall. Yep. Hopefully we get good draws. <laughs> so hopefully we don't draw Evansville in 14 weights. <laughs> oh, man. Coming out of Chicago like that, huh? Yeah. Yes. Because <laughs> I was talking to the Crown Point guys, and they said the opposite. <laughs> <laughs> they, they want, yeah, they, they probably want Evansville. Good. I'll, I'll, East Chicago and Evansville all, all day long. Um, <laughs> so last quarter bracket, Dylan Stroud, uh, senior, 32 no, having another good season. He was a uh, – was he – he's got a medal, doesn't he? He has at least one medal. Um, yeah. And he's run into some rough Friday night matches. Colton Bollenbacher from South Adams, Briar Munzee from Eastside, and then Brock Hagwood from Prairie Heights. A little N- N- NECC uh, backyard battle, Prairie Heights and Eastside right there. Um, Hagwood having a, had a real good Al Smith, and he's a pinner. So that's, that's going to be an interesting uh, ticket round match. I mean, you know, Prairie Heights is going to throw everything at you, including the kitchen sink and some hay bales. Yeah, I think uh, he kind of opened a lot of people's eyes at Al Smith about how talented he was. Uh, at least on the, the statewide scene, I'm sure you guys had an idea. But that's a tough draw, man. Dylan Stroud's really tough. That's going to be a really tough tick around. But Prairie Heights finds a way. They'll find some guys to get through that, you know, maybe you didn't think we're going to get through. And then, uh, you know, they'll be at 1A State, bring a bunch of people and be in the mix for a championship. Yep. One said Muncie and Hagwood was a conference final match. It was crazy good. Yeah, that'd be interesting. That'd be fun right off the bat. You got you got uh, Doug Smoker at East Side who coached at uh, Prairie Heights for quite a while. So that you know, Smoker can only re- coach in the uh, NECC. So that, that should be interesting. A little bit of you know that that little NECC rivalry is always fun. So um, one- yeah, I'm sure I'm sure there's not a lot of schools to pick from in that like geographical area without having to drive an hour. Yeah. Uh, 138, you got Noah Everhart from Jimtown, a solid senior there. You got Dylan Tuttle having a, you know, uh, Delta, uh, 30 and five, tough regional for, for, uh, at Jay County there. You got Jane Gilbert from Garrett, um, junior 19 and four. Then Cooper Baldwin from Peru, another junior. Those two were supposed to wrestle at Al Smith, but, uh, Gilbert got hurt and, uh, folded out. So finally, we'll, we'll get that match. I know, uh, Baldwin's had some good wins over his career. Um, just hasn't put it all the way together. But that this is kind of a interesting uh, quarter bracket with the only guy with a ranking beside him or state ranking beside him is Tuttle, who was uh, the fourth. <laughs> yeah, I mean, really tough regional. I mean, we kind of talked about that early on how how tough that regional was going to be. Everhard, um, they told me that Jimtown was going to come out and do the dodgeball tournament with Penn and uh, Mishawaka. I know Maggart was saying that uh, Jimtown's got the hands, so that uh, they're going to catch all the balls. They're getting thrown. I seen Penn took down the the, the championship this past week. It went Mishawaka, Penn, and then now they want to do it at the semi-state. I don't know if there's enough room, but it's a huge gym. Maybe they can find some room. Uh, yeah, Cooper Baldwin is another guy that's kind of been in the mix um, for four years or three years. He's a guy that, you know, I think he's always had pretty solid Al Smith. So I think we talked about that, right? Mm-hmm. He's a guy um, that's had some really good wins at the Al Smith and just hasn't found navigated his way through a state tournament at the semi-state level. Uh, but <clears throat> Jaden Gilbert, 19 to four. If you only have four losses in Garrett's schedule, I'm sure you're pretty solid. I know uh, Coach Cross will have those guys ready to roll. Yep. Um, then you got uh, going down. You got Dominic Litchfield from Belmont. Only one loss on his on the year. Turning state qualifier, Jane Teague <laughs> from DeKalb. Wyatt Price from McConaughey and Alan Maggard from Columbia City. Litchfield, probably the class of this quarter bracket. You see what Maggard said? He said, good wrestler, better dodgeball player. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Uh, uh, Maggard, I've had it a couple different weights, too. Um, I didn't know where he was going to fall in for Columbia City. Um, 
Doby Litchfield's only loss was the first round of the Al Smith. I know that, uh, you know, obviously we talk a lot to Dane. I know that the Al Smith is, you know, one of their big events. I'm sure that's not what he wanted. And then he wrestled all the way back. Like, that's that's a brutal wrestle back. You lose first round and wrestle all the way back to third. That's pretty amazing. Yeah. yeah. Um, took the scenic route. Wanted to get his money's worth. He, he goes Big Mike style. <laughs> yeah. He, uh, and I think, you know, just match after match after match, that's a, that that's, that's the hard way. I mean, obviously, it would have been tough, and me and my got a loss there. Uh, Jesse Mendez was in the finals. Probably the odds weren't in his favor, but uh, rebounded from his only loss and has had a, a really good senior year. Uh, <clears throat> Going down, you got Luke Toysh from uh, Huntington North. Didn't win sectional, but end up wrestling real well regional. Regional was kind of a crazy uh, regional there. Um, Robert Din from Western, Blake Denman from Angola, and then uh, Cameron Clark from Jay County, Angola, with the uh, 51 matches. Wow, that's crazy. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're getting their matches in. Uh, Cameron Clark returns state qualifier also, right? Yes. Um, I know he dealt with some injuries also this year as a sophomore. Uh That'd be a good one in the ticket round, possibly. Uh, I mean, 58 matches, that's a ton, especially when you only have 21. Yeah. You missed some time for injury, but maybe you're a little bit more fresh now. But uh, Toy Chin, Clark could be a, a pretty good ticket round match. Yep. Then last quarter bracket is kind of, uh, kind of crazy. You got number 24, Omari and Clark Stitz, and then Giovanni Arsini, number 23. Arsini, uh, regional was just kind of, it was a good regional at, at Carroll. Um, then you got Julius Gernsker, who is a returning state medalist, right? Am I right there? Um, I believe so. And he's number 10. And then you got Gabe Miller from Lakeland, who's no slouch with four losses. That's a, geez, you have uh, eight, ten losses between all four of those guys, and all pretty good. Uh, this is a really good quarter bracket that, I mean, you take all four of those guys a state, and you're fairly confident that you're going to do fairly well, and only one of them is making it out. Oh yeah, you take. I mean, you could take all four of those guys to state and and feel confident in your draws on Friday night. Um, that it's just unfortunate, kind of how it shook out for those guys, you know. Yeah. Oh, Marianne uh, Stitz Clark has only lost this year. Elijah Anthony, who's undefeated at um, at Newcastle, mm-hmm. having a real good senior season. Uh, Giovanni Ursi's had some. Or, or City, or how do you say it? Arsini. Yeah. Arsini. He's had some really good wins this year too. I know that he's uh, obviously in the ring. I think he's ranked higher, correct? Yeah, he's a uh, it's a twenty three yeah. over twenty uh, twenty three versus twenty four there. And then uh, number ten, obviously, uh, Garrister has a medal. Um, and Gabe Miller's on the watch list. I think that's another guy that's right there. That's that's a pretty tough quarter bracket. That might be the best quarter bracket we've come across at Fort Wayne so far. Yeah, yeah, pretty real good uh, quarter bracket there. Uh, we'll go down one forty five. This is a pretty good. Pretty solid weight here. Got another kind of death draw. Ooh. Got Toby Abbott, Cowan, returning state placer, their first state qualifier in placer. Elijah Miller from New Haven, Giovanni Cervantes from Cass, import from Griffith. <laughs> so uh, then you got Sam Levitz, returning state qualifier. Two seniors going to go at it. I am pretty positive they wrestled at semi state last year, if I'm not mistaken. So that should be a real good ticket round match right there. Oh yeah, that's that, that one's unfortunate. Uh, you don't want to see any state level guys going home uh, in the ticket round, but I mean that's the way the system is. Um, that'd be a good one. Uh, Abbott's wrestling really well. I, I think he's had like a really a really good career. I know he's a guy that's probably looking to get you know as high as the podium as he can. He'd be right in the mix with those guys. Yep. Uh, Abbott won in the third place match by fall, four oh seven. So then you got another quarter bracket. This will be an interesting one. Braden Baker from Garrett, senior 39. You got Colton Romness from Delta, who's having a pretty solid sophomore year. Um, that'll be a good, you got eight and 10 in the semi-state. Then Jalen Bellimur from Belhumer from uh, East Noble. Then Cameron Baber from Peru. Um, so that, this is kind of a pick em here. Yeah, that four and one right off the bat would be a, a pretty good match. I mean, those guys both have a lot of loss, like not a lot of losses, but I mean, before between a four and one, you're, you're you know nineteen losses between the both of them. But both those guys have wrestled a lot of tough individuals and uh, been in a lot of tough matches. I know, I believe Baker was in the rankings at some point this year. Uh, I know Ramis started in the rankings to start the year off. Um, just you know, kind of going back and forth again, like. 
you know, if you take a couple of losses, it's, it's tough to stay in the rankings. It's just, you know, kind of the nature of it. But that'll be a tough one right off the bat. Going down, uh, got really another good quarter bracket. Brody Arthur from Oak Hill, uh, returning state fifth place finisher, had a had a heck of a match to you know should have you know right there to be in the semis. Oh Braxton, yeah, Braxton Miller from DeKalb. He was a regional champ last year and was in the ticket round. Lost to uh, um, Cameron Clark. You got Jackson Todd from Carroll. And then Brandon Kinnick, another solid Daleville kid. That's a pretty solid weight class. I know Todd. Todd's had some solid wins this year. First time, first year in the lineup. Um, so this should be a real good quarter bracket. Obviously, uh, Arthur's the class of this field, but he's gonna have to have two solid matches to just punch his ticket again. Yeah, uh, I'm, I'm sure that that uh, Arthur and uh, Toby Abbott match could be really good in the semi-state finals. I, I think Brody Arthur's. Um, He's gonna be looking for a state title at, at you know. I think he's gonna be right in the mix, but it's not gonna be easy to get there. Uh, like you said, Braxton Miller, I know he's a guy that's been in the rankings. Jackson Todd's had some really good matches, one of your guys. Uh Kennex had some really good match. I think he's been up at 60 at some point too. Jeez. Um But uh like you said, Brody Arthur had an awesome uh quarterfinal match last year. He uh he's a guy that can put up points. Uh, I'm sure those guys, and if it's the the thing, like it's like JJ Conway, he wrestled Jesse as a freshman and got, uh, you know, pinned Friday night. Two years later, he wins the state title. Brody Arthur wrestled Jesse Friday night uh, two years ago. I don't know, man. Maybe he's going to get a title. Yep. This might be Matthew Kuntz's year, too. Yep. You never know. <laughs> so, <clears throat> the last quarter bracket, you got Ben Miller from Lakeland having a real good senior year. Had a story on him also. Uh, Ty Galvin from McConaughey. Reed Brandenburg from Winchester and Jacob Miller from Homestead. So um could be a Miller on Miller crime in the ticket round. But uh, Mil- Brent Miller having a real good year, has, has had some solid wins. So um, he's one to to watch out for. Yeah, uh, real tough. I know he's been in the, the rankings the last couple of years. I believe he had a really good freshman sophomore year as a runner-up two years ago. Uh, lost to Delaney Roman 5-0. Had wins over Brevin Thine, Cody Glitheroe. I mean, just kind of tell you the level that he can wrestle at. I mean, those guys we, we've talked about over the last couple of nights about how, how talented those guys are. So when you think of that, like he has wins over those guys. They just don't maybe get as much publicity because he's from a smaller school out there in Lakeland. I mean, I don't know if Lakeland's small or not. Is it small? Yeah, it's kind of small. But, yeah, he lost to Levitz, Sam Levitz twice. Beat him beat him the time it counted at, at regional. So that's kind of – Yeah, put him, in a, put him in a tough spot. Yeah. So, um, going down, we'll go to 152. Got some good matches here at 152. Um, starting out at uh, Mitchell Betts from uh, from Western, having a real good uh, sophomore year. 39 and 0, has some really good wins. Brady Shifley from Lakeland, Rizon Davenport from Daleville, and then Elijah Talamantes from Snyder. Kind of came out late and having a pretty solid, uh, solid year. That should, that could be a real kind. Of, he's kind of sneaky good, and that could be a real good uh, ticket round match there. Yeah, uh, I think his first, some of his first matches. I don't think his first matches, but I know he took some losses at uh, Al Smith. Probably didn't have the Al Smith that he wanted. I know, um, even though General Heavy Hands is taking a hiatus from the board, I know he was very high on Talamantes and I felt like I was sleeping on him. Uh, that could be a good ticket round match. I know Benz. Uh, gave Tristan Hood all his losses. They wrestled a good amount. But uh, Mitchell Benz had a real good freshman, sophomore year all, uh, state tournament where he was a third placer. Mm-hmm. So I don't think he wants to go back. He's probably looking to get a medal. Because if you get a medal, you can't wrestle freshman, sophomore, state, right? It's qualifier or less. Correct. So, so. Um, Going down, you got Caleb Lounsbury from Prairie Heights, Jordan Ayers, Manchester, uh, Austin Brookie from Carroll, AJ Dole, South Adams. Dole was a... Uh, Qualifier two years ago, Lounsbury was a ticket rounder last year, and some this this is gonna be a real good quarter bracket. Um, I know we've wrestled Lounsbury early in the season, so that's gonna you know kind of looking can't look past Dole, but that that's gonna be a good real for, good first round match, nineteen and uh, twenty three. Yeah, right off the bat, that's gonna be tough, and I know like I'm not just saying it because you're on the show with me. Obviously, like uh, we've talked about it before, Bricky's wrestled you know kind of a who's who, but I think it's mostly of uh east chicago semi-state guys i know he, he lost a hood he's lost the costello twice he lost a bisping 
he uh, lost to Chase Leach, who was in your guys' semi state. Yeah. But that's going to be a tough one right out the gate. You know, two seniors going at it. Uh, Dahl is really talented. I mean, obviously, a state qualifier. And then uh, the winner of that could have the winner of Ayers and uh, Lounsbury. Yep. Going down, you got uh, Alex Curry, undefeated senior, having a real good year. Uh, placed two years ago, qualified last year. Um, <laughs> Easton Arsini from uh, Homestead. Uh, uh, beat Hood also, yeah. yeah. I said that Bats gave him all of his losses, Bricky. Uh, he beat Hood. No, we uh, that was off season stuff. That wasn't this year. Oh, okay. He lost to, actually he lost to Hood at, at the, Tom, Tom Cameron, Cameron, right? Yeah. But okay. that was a long time ago. <laughs> Cam Friedline from uh, Elkhart and then Grayson Guard from Rochester. So uh, um, Rubber match Friday night. Yes. <laughs> so it should be a you know, Curry kind of the class of this field, number four in the state, having a real good senior year and kind of been been in the mix for quite a few years and definitely pretty tough. And you get some bigger programs here too. Uh, Homestead, Elkhart, Rochester. I mean, Rochester's not a big school, but Grayson Guards was in and out of the rankings also. I think he took his first loss at Team State, which is, uh, you know, took a couple since then, but that, that'll be a tough one. That's probably not the draw you want. Alex Curry is really good. I think he's pretty good on top too, which is uh, makes it even more difficult. Um, then you going down in the last quarter bracket, Chase Leach, returning state qualifier, uh, Evan Watt from Blackford, Brady Porter from Eastern, and then Josh Kunkel from Angola. She's another 50 matches. Where are they, Russell? <laughs> um, yeah. Porter's brothers, obviously, I assume they might be twins, I guess. Um, so it should be, that should be, could be an interesting uh, take around match. Leach having a real good, you know, sophomore year. He, he's going the more conventional path to try to qualify for state this year. Last year he was, Fourth at sectional, fourth at regional, fourth at semi-state. Made it to state though, so uh, he's going the more conventional this year. He's going one one, one and one the first two weeks. <laughs> yeah, fifty two kind of uh, uh, even now pretty good too. Where you guys are kind of all those guys are pretty well separated, and the ticket round match is going to all be you know pretty good. There's never not really a, a super death draw in there where you look at it and you're just kind of like ugh, you know. Yeah, so pretty good weight there overall. Um, 160, and then the weight where everyone got fairly well separated. You got Caden Lone from uh, Northwood having a good junior year. He's been in the mix for uh, for a couple years. Uh, Levi Abbott from Cowan. Um, two, you know, both those names coach's sons, so that's going to be an interesting battle. Chandler Minnick from Garrett, uh, limited matches, but he's going to come out battling. Then Kamani Howard from Kokomo. Um, that could be a real, pretty solid uh, take around match. Howard and Lone there. Yeah, I think right, um, Lone, a middle school state champ, coming in. I know he's had some uh, – he's been pretty tough. Obviously, his older brother was really tough. He was under the lights with Joe uh, Joe Walker. <clears throat> That's not an easy one right off the bat. Levi Abbott's pretty tough, 21-8. and eight. Uh, They're 4-1. and one, But I know Caden Lone's uh, had a really good season so far. I, I'm sure they're looking not just to get uh, a ticket, but they're probably looking to get a medal. And probably that rematch in the semis from uh, Al Smith, which was a really good match. Yeah, that was a real good match. You got Duke Myers, Belmont, number eight in the state, um, having a real good sophomore year, actually wrestling the whole season. Luke Severe from Prairie Heights, and then Deegan Pleak from uh, Western, and then Aaron Kissler from Homestead. Pleak's dad was a state champ for Cathedral. So, um, you know, someone you can't <laughs> – Western always has some good kids, and that's obviously a guy has some good lineage there, and obviously Myers has some good lineage also. <laughs> so, yeah, an uh, take around match, and not possibly a battle of their dad's former state champs. Yeah, um, uh, kind of indie moving up north, huh? Yeah, got a couple indie guys at Western. So that should be. Uh, oh, go ahead. Yeah, yeah, Duke Duke Meyer is really tough. I mean, another guy is probably looking to get a medal. Probably a lot better. Uh, he's down a weight also, right? He was at seventy last year. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, probably a more natural fit for him. Guy that's been real talented, kind of dealt with some injuries coming into high school. So it's good to see him having a a solid uh, solid sophomore year. Going down, you got Jared Landaz, Carroll, uh, thirty three and five. Brayden Fennell from North Miami, Ethan Friedline from Elkhart, and then Jonah Jones from Monroe Central. You got five and six in the uh, semi-state, but uh, the number six is ranked. Caleb doesn't give him the, uh, or you, 
yeah, you're not, not giving uh, Jones any love, so and Caleb not giving us enough love, so I'm gonna have to fire him. But uh, should be a good good court uh, good match. I know uh, Freeline's pretty tough. We uh, we wrestled him at uh, Al Smith. He was like six four, seven four, something like that, with Duke Myers at Al Smith. So he's a pretty solid sophomore. Um, so really, that that could be a really interesting first round match there. Yeah, uh, I mean, obviously, like that's one of the unique things that we do is uh, Caleb does his semi state rankings, and I do my state rankings, and you know, I, I kind of use loosely use it. I'm sure he kind of loosely uses the state rankings too. But mm-hmm. when you look back, it's you know, like uh, he sees those guys a little bit different than I do. Like obviously, we see Landers on a uh, a bigger um, statewide thing. You guys wrestle a really good schedule. I haven't seen a lot of Monroe Central. Um, and I'm sure you guys haven't seen each other, so it, it makes it a little bit tougher to rank those guys. But um, Landa's having a real good year. He's had a real good career. I know as a guy that you were pretty high on a couple of years ago uh, when he was kind of starting into the lineup. So put himself in a good position, but, I mean, you still got to show up and go out there and wrestle that first-round match with Freeline and Jones would be tough, and then possibly the winner get Landa's. Yeah. So um, going down, we got um, last quarter bracket, Logan Farnell from McConaughey returning state qualifier. His loss is to uh, Logan Landon Bow, Logan Bow, Logan Bow. Yeah, and it wasn't it was it wasn't bad either. It was uh, it was kind of close. Right? Yeah, five, five two. two yeah. Um, Farnell's tough. He's tough on top. He's kind of you know kind of funky. Kind of has kind of lower stance. We we wrestled him at the uh, Wild Bill. <laughs> and uh you know he's pretty tough uh nice big red curly hair um he's one that's you know i was pretty impressed with him i you know he has some funkiness and you know as, as, a, as a coach i'm glad we got our hands on him got to feel it and possibly looking you know looking way ahead of time you know semifinals we can make adjustments and not be surprised by what, what he's throwing at us but uh he has kevin kevon russell from leo Kane Funk from Adam Central, and then Eli Nepper in the bottom quarter there. Yeah, I think Logan Farnell is a guy that I'm uh, I'm pretty interested to see how he does. I think that he's pretty tough, and I thought I thought last year he kind of caught fire as an unranked guy, made it to the state finals. But I think you're right. I think he gives guys a lot of problems. I think he's incredibly strong. I think he uh, puts guys in kind of some weird positions also. Uh, exactly. Um, you're exactly right there. <laughs> he put, he put Landis uh, in some weird positions. <laughs> well, I think that's uh, – you know, one of those things you look at, uh, like you don't, if you don't get those matches a lot, like you don't know how you're going to react to those. And that could be a, you know, maybe a guy that they're overlooking from a smaller school mm-hmm. uh, Friday night that could make a run to the, maybe state semi finals. Uh, and just kind of Nick was, you know, talking about seeding the semi state. Like if it, if it was, it's kind of how it would be seated, right? Like Farnell's returning qualifier there, less losses than Myers, who's also returning qualifier. Yeah. Loans a, a semi-state guy, so that might have been like how it ended up being with the champs. Yeah, you got two guys. The qualifiers were separated, and then you know you put. I mean, you put Myers because Myers was a four last year. Um, Barnell was second there, Mister Landing. Come on, man. Um, and then yeah, so I, that's how you'd almost see it. I mean, the most as far as where you can. But I get this way. I mean, we kind of knew going in the four bet the. Four guys were kind of separated. You know, you knew Farnell's pretty tough. You knew um, Myers is pretty tough. You know, as, as looking at, you know, from our perspective, and Lowen's pretty tough. So, you know, you, it really isn't a crazy death draw of, you know, one of those guys running into each other. So, pretty pretty wide open weight class there. Um, should be some good ones. Yeah, Once I seven, think uh, yeah, you, we, we talk about that a lot. Yeah, the, the one thing you take care of is, you know, winning your, your regional and those guys took care of business because if you didn't, you did have a possibility of a death draw there. Yeah, definitely. Um, so you got 170. Speaking of death draws, this is a tough yeah. class overall. It's at the bottom though, right? Yeah, that's the last one. So Oof. yeah, yeah this is a good weight class, and you knew it was going to get ugly here. Um, Eli Johnson Norwell, returning state qualifier. Um, Adam Adam Badenlayer from Cass. Ethan Skinner from Central Noble. Justice Gillery from Columbia City via Carroll. Um, that's Eli Johnson's having a real good year and just dominating people. He's one should hopefully we'll see him on uh, high on the podium. Yeah, I think he's uh, well, I mean, what do we have him ranked? What do I have him ranked? I think he's pretty high in the rankings. Eighth, yep. Um, I, I think that he's a guy that's overlooked statewide. You don't hear a lot of uh, he's not getting a lot of praise that the other guys do. And I think Norwell's done a really good job also. Yeah, they have a real I good think, team. 
they have a very good team. Um, I know they're the vote in. They, I don't know if they got. I was in that conversation. I'm not going to release all this stuff, but I don't. Maybe they didn't get the respect that they they kind of deserved. But uh, Eli Johnson's a guy. I wouldn't be shocked if uh, he had a high medal. That's no disrespect to these other guys because this is probably one of. I mean, like 120. But this is a very deep weight at at Fort Wayne. Yeah, this is not a weight that you really want to. This is not a a weight from Fort Wayne you want to draw on a Friday night from any of the. No, guys. and and you know I think people give Fort Wayne a hard time, but there's a lot of those weights. You know, you know who do you want at 52? Who do you want at 60? You know. Yeah. Like. You know, who wants to draw Aiden Sprague Friday night? Yeah. You know, none, none of those guys. I, I mean, uh, a lot of times you guys have been knocking each other off in the ticket round, which we're going to talk about here because I think there's two medalists that um, one's going to go home, which is unfortunate. Yeah. Like two guys that could be, you know, possibly uh, two guys that could possibly be state semifinals, and one of them is not going to be there because he had a tougher regional. Yeah. So going down, you got Brody Porter from Eastern, senior, uh, two-time qualifier, I believe. Maverick yep. Somerset from South Adams, not the draw for once, but if you're for it, this, I mean, we, we have a guy here, and I knew if we didn't win it, we were going to be in not a good spot. <laughs> the, the three champions, we had Porter, uh, Eli Johnson, or Buchanan to draw into, I like, we're not going to get an easy match. <laughs> not that you're getting any wow. easy matches here anyway, but uh, Mav- Somerset, you know, you get a four. He got a tough draw there. Going down, you got Will Jeffries, a uh, freshman from Carroll. Then you got sophomore Leish Detweiler from Goshen. So a couple of young guys battling out to go to, you know, get a ticket round match and let it fly against uh, possibly a, pr- a pretty good senior. And you never know what happens. You got a guy that, that you know, is senior thinking he's going to go and kind of looking forward to a, a semifinal match, possibly with Eli Johnson, that kind of stuff. You know, you never know what happens. Crazy stuff happens in, in, the, in the ticket round. So, um. yeah. Um, Brody Porter only loss was uh, at the uh, Carnahan Eastern was there at that like meat grinder, which was, uh, I think he, I think he lost to an Illinois kid. I think he might've lost to a kid from um, uh, Marmion, but I'm not positive. Yeah, he had wrestled, He didn't even make it to the semis, so then he ran. He had to run through the consolation, which kind of sucked. He didn't get to yeah. Of those. I mean, because he was. I mean, literally, there was five really, five or six really good guys, and he didn't get to see the better ones. You know, he didn't get to yeah. run through a couple of those guys. I think it was a come from behind win too, which, uh, I mean, but those are the matches that you kind of need. You want, you want those. Like that's why I think it was cool that they were there. Like that's a match that he's gonna want to. You know, you don't want to take a loss, but you want, you know, to fix what you're doing. Uh, Maverick Somerset's had some um, good wins. That's a tough uh, four four uh, spot, but Brody Porter coming down kind of changed the way the the weight was gonna go because you knew that you're gonna have a possibility of what we're gonna get to in a second. Mm-hmm. Going down, you got Kamari Kirk from New Haven having a real good senior year. Um, Sid Elliver from Northridge, the token ten and twenty wrestler. Zach France from Manchester, then Braxton Russell from Delta. Kirk's kind of under the radar having a Pretty solid year. He, his losses are to Cashman, Hayden Shepard, Vincent Tinoco, and twice to Eli Johnson. So not any bad losses by any means. So that's sh- he's one that's you know put himself in a good spot. Winning, uh, winning regional um, should be right in the mix to punch a ticket for the Bulldogs. Yeah, and I'm sure uh, Coach LeCount and those guys are trying to get Braxton Russell through. I'm sure Braxton Russell gets to wrestle. Um, uh, who's the assistant coach there, the state champ? Jacob um, Gray. Yeah, Jacob Gray every day, so I'm sure that's fun for him. But also, you're you're getting better there, mm-hmm. sophomore. Yep. And, and then this one, and then this yeah. gut punch. Yeah, uh, Landon Buchanan, Mason Daring from Bluers, Austin Krishner from Belmont, and then Hayden Shepard from Western. Two returning state medalists. Oof. And I know, I mean, I know Shepard was flirting with going down to one one sixty this year. And this is that's a gut punch. You got two really good kids, great programs that, oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. And, and Shepard's all his losses are to Porter, yeah. And then Buchanan lost uh, one to Vezzi and one to um, um, Columbus East kid. I mean, that's tough, man. That, that's yeah. not where you want to be. Yep. Yeah, that's not a. I mean, you kind of. I mean. You knew there was one good draw coming out for Shepard. 
um, or whoever lost between him. And you got because he, I mean, because you have Eli Johnson, uh, you're getting Johnson, Buchanan, or for uh, Carroll kid, you know, come, whoever comes out of Carroll. So that's you're playing the draw, but I mean, you know, that it's gonna be a heck of a match. Let's see who get after it. So, um, you know, oh, yeah, Shepard's up from 152 and um, Easy. you know, 145. So Buchanan's only up one weight class from last year, so that should be it'll be a good match. That'll be a barn burner. Yeah, and I think um I mean that that one that's the one, you know, obviously if you're talking to the other guys in that quarter bracket that don't have that match, they're probably like, Yeah, you know, it is what it is in Indiana, right? Yeah. But um that's one you probably look at and you're like, Man, we should probably uh have Russell backs. Yeah. One eighty two De Al Capone Vizi. 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 Um, having a pretty good year. Those four losses are kind of, uh, really, he should only have two two or three. I don't know. It depends on how you kind of calculate it. But only one was by slam. One was he got, he Russell Buchanan got pinned while he got hurt and then defaulted two matches. So technically, really, only one loss. So, <laughs> yeah, I think I would have liked to have, uh, Seen those other matches at Al Smith. Obviously, you don't want to see anyone hurt, but I like to see him against Simpson and Suze, you know? Mm-hmm. Right. He beat Suze earlier in, this, in the tournament, but a rematch would have been interesting. Um, Dalton May, Cowan, senior, uh, Caleb Schaefer, Rochester senior, and then Jonathan Flores from Goshen, sophomore, but uh, VZ's legit. He's pretty tough, to say the least. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yep, that's pretty much the future of uh, Fort Wayne, right? Yep. It's going to be one through VZ. Um, 82 is going to be, uh, yeah, 82 is going to be interesting in the state, but he's going to be right there. Yep. yep and if yep. he wins the state title, man, he, he's earning it for sure. I mean, I don't know if he's going to go the the Mason Parish route and, you know, maybe uh, go 2 1 1 or however it shakes out, but he's good, man. He's really, really good. And he's good in, in positions that you don't normally see freshmen good in. He's really good in the top position, he's explosive. Um, He's the real deal. Yeah. Uh, going down, you got returning state placer Hunter Page, 39-1. His only loss is to VZ. Nolan Scott from Homestead. Connor McPhee from Jimtown. And then Jaden Goshert from Northfield. Uh, Page is having a real good year. Pretty tough. Um, you know, definitely. Probably, he's probably looking, you know, quarter brackets are pretty well separated right here. VZ and him should be another good match. Yeah, uh, Page was a kind of a surprise medalist last year for us. Uh, for me, I, I, he was unranked. But, um, yeah, I mean, Northfield's uh, Jaden Goshert, only two losses. Uh, I mean, Jimtown wrestles a real tough schedule. They're right in that, that same South Bend area, so, you know, he's wrestling, you know, Penn and Mishawaka, so they're probably seeing those guys a lot. Um, I know they're at Al Smith, so that could be a, a pretty interesting first-round match to go into the ticket round with Page, who's a returning medalist. Who's trying? Those guys will be trying to do to Page what happened to him, what he did last year, where kind of make his way through the bracket. Yep. Uh, going down, you got a pretty much a big pick em right here. Trey Tobias Northwood, Austin Ringenson from Maconaqua, Caleb Oliver from Cherbusco. Three losses, number nine in the semi state, and then Bryce Wank from Jay County. And Wank's been in and out of the rank. I know it's at least the semi state rankings. Yeah. Um, and Oliver's. Pretty big, strong Cherbusco kid. They like to lift weights in Busco, Turtle Town. So that could be a real good uh, match. This is a pick. I'm here. Um, Oliver's had a good. I season. think there's a, there's a Caleb Oliver for Rensselaer too, but he spells. I believe he spells his name with a C. <laughs> nice. Two Caleb Olivers. You just gotta make sure when you put in the results, you know which one you're getting. Yeah. So not a whole lot to say there, other than this is just a, you know, a couple some young guys in there, some seniors, and that's gonna be an interesting. Uh, Match. You know, I mean, we talked about it early on. Um, I mean, obviously, anything could happen. And I know Jay County's probably looking at their draws and thinking they can make a run at this uh, semi-state, you know, championship. And Wank's going to be a guy in the mix that they're going to hope to get through. They said they wrestled at the Carroll Superdole earlier. Did they wrestle it there? Yeah, that's what I'm looking up here. Let's see. We have a website. on Carroll Superdole. They did not wrestle. I do not believe. Let's see. Unless, I don't think they must have wrestled. They might not have wrestled, I don't think. But that could be a good one right off the bat, semi-state. Yep. Um, 
So going down, Jaquan East, uh, Kokomo, number three in the semi-state. Nolan Parks, West Noble. Trevor Curry, number five in the semi-state. And then Austin Ferris from Dwanger, um, number seven in the semi-state. I believe Curry wrestled Ferris late in the season and won. Curry's had some solid wins. Obviously, he coaches son getting beat up by his older brother. This is a real good quarter bracket, kind of, you know, a little bit different pick them because you kind of know some of these names, but uh, should be a good good uh, quarter bracket. Yeah, I think that, that match right off the bat, obviously Caleb does a good job, so I'm sure his rankings are pretty close. So five and seven right off the bat to feed into three. Uh, Kokomo with 44 ma- matches too, that's a lot. Yeah. I know Jaquan at least has had some uh, pretty solid offseason results. I mean, enough that, you know, we put him in the um, – the watch list and stuff, third at Frest, uh, Freestyle, fourth at Greco, second at Central Regional, one John Hurdle. So not nothing to, uh, you know, bad. Or I, a real good freestyle guy. He was also a cadet champ, first at freshman, sophomore. So a guy, I know he was in the rankings at some point. Yeah. So it should be a good I don't know what dropped him out. I, have to, I, don't, I can't remember what dropped him out of the rankings. Lost to Tilton, lost to Kale Albro. That's two of his losses. You're looking at I think I lost to Tilton twice. He's looking at yep, that. lost to Tilton twice. Yeah. So. 195. That's another interesting weight class here. Uh, Jack O'Connor Garrett with the regional title after getting third. Um, Benja lost in the finals. Um, Mason Taylor, McConaughey, Taylor Luther, Norwell, Jacob Baim from uh, Fremont. Found out who won, his one loss was too that uh, wasn't reported. So he's had two losses of the same guy. But um, we'll talk about uh, uh, Armin Kuhan Arm- from uh, Concord. But uh, Bames beaten O'Connor a couple times this year, the NECC rivalry. So this should be a good, solid quarter record. Luther is pretty solid. Um, so this should be an interesting quarter right here. Got some NECC on uh, NECC crime here. Yeah, and a lot of these upper weights, you're starting to see a lot of the same teams, right? You're starting to see a lot of Norwell, McConaughey. Mm-hmm. So it's it's pretty interesting. Yeah, and Norwell, I mean, another young guy for Norwell. Norwell has pretty good guys coming up. Um, pretty good quarter bracket coming up here. You got Alex De- Deming from uh, Rochester, sophomore, 38-1. Mickey Daring from Bishop Lewis, sophomore. Um, kids, eh, grinder, pretty solid wrestler. Isaac Clay from Central Noble. You know, they have a couple big, good big guys and Henry Kukohan from Belmont. So you got potential 14 and 23 in the ticket round and then a three and five. So either way, the rankings, someone rank, we got a little bit different of opinions in the rankings, which is kind of fun and it'll be interesting to see how that plays out. I know whoever, whoever wins that one is going to have a little bit of trash talk. Yeah, I think uh, Alex, Alex uh, Denling has only lost his to uh, the, the Whitco kid. He got, he got pinned. Um, it was pretty early. He had some nice wins over uh, the Tip of Canoe Valley kid. That was a state qualifier. Basil. For, uh, yeah, Basil. So, uh, pretty solid sophomore. They got some big guys for Rochester that are pretty good, and they're young. Yeah, yeah, they are. The whole, the whole team's young. So, um, and you got Armin Kuku Kolki Khan. Luther Kukan. was 220 in heavyweight last year. Yeah, yeah, Good he's a him, big, he's big. He is a big kid. Uh, Keegan Bloom from Adam Central, um, no slouch at fifteen and five. I know he has some decent wins. Um, MJ Norman from Western, that's a uh, he's been to semi state a couple times. And Isaac Eberhard from Carroll, um, kind of deceiving eleven losses. Good schedule, kind of starting to wrestle a little bit better at the end of the season here. Uh, no, we wrestled Kut Kulan. From Concord at Al Smith. He was a – Kukulon was a placer. He placed seventh or eighth. Yeah, big. placed seventh there, yeah. Yeah, big and big and athletic, strong. Um, so that's – I mean, you know, Concord doesn't get many state qualifiers. He's right in a good position there. Um, should be some good matches there. That's a – I mean, that's a real good quarter bracket. Yeah, I think that's one of those ones that anyone could probably pull that out. Uh, a lot of those guys wrestle pretty good schedules. I'm not sure. I know Concord's obviously at Al Smith, but I don't know. Adam Central's wrestled a good schedule. Western and Carroll all wrestle good schedules. So, but Kunko Han took care of business, won his regional, put himself in a good spot. Yeah, he's had some. I know he lost like the LaVille kid. He also had some weird losses, but obviously. LaVille kid's at semi state, though, too, right? Yeah. Yeah, he's uh, he's been overlooked and kind of under the radar. And 
might punch his ticket to state. Uh, last quarter bracket, Jack, Jackson and, Den, and Genetto, um, a senior from Daleville, another solid Daleville wrestler, Peter Bradley, West Noble, Nate Elliott from Huntington North, and Chad Washburn, a returning state qualifier, uh, 19 and 21. Uh, and Elliott's pretty solid, uh, pretty solid wrestler from Huntington North, so that's a real good quarter bracket. Yeah, Chad Washburn lost a real tight one to um, Dem- Deming, uh, overtime match in the championship at their regional. Um, kind of set up a pretty good quarter bracket there. I mean, that, that ticket round match could be a uh, pretty, pretty good, whether it's Elliott or Washburn, Washburn returns to qualifier too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. As a freshman at, I think it was at 195 last year, 220. This is going to be a fun weight. This is a, we can talk about yeah. this one for a long time. Uh, you got two state ranked guys <laughs> right off the bat. Jelante Hinton, Northrop had a real good, uh, really, really good, uh, semi or, uh, regional, uh, avenging a couple losses with pins. Uh, Titus Walters, uh, Muncie Central, tough junior. Um, AJ Bradley trained, Elijah Buckley Eastern, and then Nash Schubert from Elkhart. Uh, that first round match will be fun. Uh, Hinton's fun to watch. Um, he will launch you from every position, and he's he's fun. I mean, he had he had a real good, a real good regional. Um, got the the token eight minute and six second pin in the finals. <laughs> So he 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 went he went super duper overtime, but should be some uh, good matches right here. Yeah, and I know we talked about uh, two of Titus Waters' losses were at the regional lap this past week, which uh, you know Blake Hirely is really good, and then he also lost to uh, Joel Kennedy from Monroe Central, and then before that he lost to the uh, Sheridan kid, and he lost to Greg Johnson. That's gonna be a good one right off the bat. Like both those guys. Um, pretty good wrestlers yep. i mean you could have a four over a one or you could have johnson to hinton running back to the state finals but that's that's, that's gonna be tough and that's before you even get to buckley and uh schubert yep uh blake hirely um central returning uh state medalist matt mills homestead it's gonna be a, i mean uh, they wrestled earlier highly pinned him but um mills mills will be ready there i know uh, coach Oberlin will have him ready i'm sure he's wrestling him this week kicking his butt hitting him with uh firemen's uh <laughs> um so uh should be a good first round match. Uh Travis Hankey from Northridge and then Silas Jones from Oak Hill. Looks like these four four and ones are gonna be the better matches so far, but Hirely yeah. uh, put himself in a good spot here. Um it'll be interesting him and like Hinton possibly in the in the quarters. In the His only losses to the uh, West Lafayette kid at uh yep. ninety five who bumped up. Barkett. But who's pretty yeah, good. yeah, but Mills and Hirely right off the bat. You're right. Like one and four again. That's another great match. That's before you get to Hinky and, and Silas Jones. I mean, those guys can get wore out. Uh, you know, right off the bat, and then you're if you're looking past. Oh, I won a tough one. Now I got to wrestle this other guy. The tick around. You might be overlooking someone. Yep. Going down. This will be a couple rematches coming right here. Rochester Prairie Heights. Um, Beck beat Allen at uh, at uh, Team State. I believe it was eleven one. Allen was a four last year. Uh, four, yeah, one made the semi, made the quarterfinals, um, made the take around. So don't don't overlook a Prairie Heights guy right there. Beck's having a real good year. His only losses to uh, Grange. Long. Yeah. Um, then you got a uh, rematch from a from a duel. Dylan Bennett, uh, Keegan Martin, twenty and twenty one. So you got six twenty twenty one. And I know Allen's been in the rankings here and there. Um, only five losses on a pretty good Prairie Heights schedule. Uh, Bennett beat Martin in their duel, but going to be, you know, a lot more at stake here. So it should be interesting. Uh, this is going to be a real fun quarter bracket. <laughs> yeah. Um, Eric's right, man. We should let Nick get on this one. He had more comments than we have than we've talked. <laughs> um, yeah, all four of those guys, uh, that would be one of the winner pickups title. Someone's going to pick that one right, and a lot of people are going to pick that one wrong because I think there's four guys there that can punch a ticket. Uh, Dylan Bennett, I mean, I mean, obviously me and you have talked back and forth. He's really came on and wrestled really well. You know, he has a win over uh, Hinton. Did he? Did he get a win over Martin? Or did, did yeah, Martin he, beat he beat Martin. He's beaten. Uh, he beat Harris. He's one and one with Harris. One and one. Or one and two against Hinton. Hinton. He wrestled Hinton one of the first matches of the of the year with him, and then beat him, and then lost to him this past week. But yeah, he's getting better every week. So it's going to be interesting to see um, and, Martin. And he's pretty jacked too. Yeah, I, I heard he lifts weights from what I've learned. I mean, he look, looks very similar to me. I'm going to say that. 
I don't want to be. Yeah, I don't, don't, don't want to be brag, humble brag or anything, but we look a lot alike. Ah <laughs> oh, man, and this, even like I think there's like eight or nine guys at two twenty that are that are uh, monsters, man. Maybe yeah. even more than that. Because even the next quarter bracket is yeah, brutal. Another, ne- ne- this, this is this is our uh, our Evansville type weight. Because there's, I mean, I know we were talking, you know, when we were doing the rankings late in the season, there was someone else. I don't know if you pulled someone from this weight. I can't remember. There, there's someone we we're going back and forth. Like, dude, I have too many Car- uh, Fort Wayne guys. <laughs> in oh this yeah. Weight. <laughs> so. I mean, even doing if you're ranking 25, like Harris has good wins. Uh, Joel Kennedy's 38 and two. He has good wins. Isaac Benjamin's 30 and one. He has really good wins. Martin, I think. Did he fall out of the rankings? He's right in the – no, he's still in the rankings. He has – he's ultra-athletic. There's a lot of big athletic kids. Yeah. You know, this is one of those weights like you didn't want to, you know, spread these guys out. Some of these guys don't want to go 95. Some of these guys don't want to go heavyweight. Yeah, yeah, exactly. There, there's no Reeve Muncy to the heavyweight this year. <laughs> you can go heavyweight. You guys can. Um, so this BAM quarterback at Isaac Benjamin Northwood having a real good year. Um, 30-1. and one. His only loss is to um, – uh, Tommy Morrill at Al Smith, not a bad loss to have. Preston Duffy from Manchester, uh, sophomore. I think he was at semi state last year. Joel Kendi, Chance Harris is a rematch right here. Um, Kendi won 9 3 uh, right before Christmas. So, um, two pretty good guys uh, right there. Um, should be an interesting, uh, another interesting quarter bracket that, you know, anyone can win. Uh, Harris tough wrestler I, we, we've seen in the past few weeks and Andy obviously wrestling well in Euro Central has some pretty good guys that uh, are looking to make some runs here on Euro Central cranking out some bigger weights too huh <laughs> yeah um, Tyler I can ride him for more than 10 minutes as long as he's really tired and that's the end of practice <laughs> dude 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 he, he, he lives by the GTFO uh, a motto that we have <laughs> get the out <laughs> For you, for, for you guys, it's a little bit slower. <laughs> so, yeah, just a great weight class <laughs> uh, here overall. So, uh, good luck winning pickums. You, you get the top four here, you're probably going to do pretty well in the pickums. Last weight class, uh, starting with one of the best names in wrestling, Brendan Villafelote from uh, Angola, 49 and 0. Uh, Josh Clark, New Haven, number 10, the semi-state. Tyler Wright, Eastern Greentown. And Juan Cruz from Bel- uh, from Bluffton. He's had some interesting matches, wins. Cruz has another solid young Bluffton guy. Bella Ferrete was a uh, state qualifier last year, and he used to have a nice, glorious mullet. I do not believe he has one now. He went mulletless, huh? Yeah. 49-0, and uh, returning state qualifier. Uh, ranked pretty high in the states. What do we? What do we have? I don't have it in front of me. Uh, number four. Number four. Um, <clears throat> Juan Cruz, you're right. He has he's had some interesting results, but not a lot of losses in here. Tyler Wright, 35 and four. I don't remember him at the uh, Carnahan, but I think that he was there. I know that was a tough weight. I mean, you had Leighton Jones. I think Leighton Jones took a loss there. Yeah. So, uh, Josh Clark. I think he's also had some pretty nice wins this year. Mm-hmm. Uh, going down, Ian Clifford from Columbia City was a semi-state champ last year at 220. Uh, Landon Armstrong from DeKalb, a little, little at Northeast State, uh, on Northeast State crime there. Uh, then Brady Hyatt, another good Monroe Central big guy. Then, you know, Trevi Hillman, for, Hillman Conley from Peru, freshman. Um, that's pretty impressive to be runner-up there. So, uh, Yeah, really impressive, right? Yeah. Yeah, so that should be. I think he's the um, only freshman uh, semi-state qualifier. Yeah, yeah, at a big heavyweight. So, um, you know, Clifford's had a pretty good year. He's only has one loss, and that's the or. So, um, you're looking to looking to bring a state state medal home this year after last year being a champ and losing on Friday night. Yeah, and, and uh, Hellman Conley will have a tough one uh, right off the bat with Brady Hyatt. We were just talking about Monroe Central and. You know, kind of producing some some solid big guys. I don't know who the the big guy coach there is, but they're doing a pretty good job. They got a lot of guys going to semi state down there, and then the winner of that match I'll have possibly Clifford. Yeah. Um, last half bracket, you got Marshall Fishback. Not exactly the best uh, 
wrestler uh, name uh, from Rochester. Having a real good senior year. He's 37-1, and one, only losses to Makai Watts. Um, then Dalton Robinson from Belmont. That should be a good match. Robinson's had some solid matches. I know he'll, he'll be ready. Um, senior. Um, Was Dalton uh, Robinson undefeated going into the Al Smith? No, he had a couple losses because he lost to Philip Fuentes, and he lost like one or two other. He lost to Clifford, I believe. Okay, um, so so he had a couple. Sure. He had like two or three losses, but they were like pretty legit losses. Um, but he's pretty solid. I mean, he's you know kind of plugged away over the years, and that's not a good you know four versus one right there. Um, obviously both teams no. are going to kind of be looking. Belmont's looking for a semi-state title. Um, Rochester can kind of you know. I don't say backdoor because they have some pretty solid kids, but oh, they, they're kind I mean, of overlooked gonna, in this. In yeah, this they're going to try to take that to the wire. I mean, they're closing out strong, 220, heavyweight, 95. Mm-hmm. They have guys right in the mix. Yeah. And and you have, I mean, you could, uh, obviously you have a Belmont-Rochester match right here, and then 220, you could have a Belmont-Rochester match in the ticket round also. So, um, you know, you, you got to you gotta help, you know, when you're in those positions, you got to hope for some help from other teams. You got to help, you know, Carol – knocks off some guys and Garrett knocks off some guys and Jay County knocks off some guys or whatever, but you also, those guys, then those teams might just right, right, be right in the mix too. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you gotta, you gotta do your, you gotta, you gotta do it yourself too. You, you have an opportunity like that. So, um, then you got Layton, Lane Norris from uh, central noble Parker Hennessy from heritage. Um, you know, obviously that first round match will probably be the be- better one. Uh, Fishbacks having a pretty good uh, senior year and another b- good big guy. For uh, for uh, for Rochester, Hennessy, I like that man, Parker Hennessy. And then the bottom quarter bracket's gonna be probably one of the better ones here. Uh, Jason Orr, Muncie Central, AJ Bradley trained twenty eight and two, losses are to Branham, and I don't know who that is exactly. And then uh, that's Quentin, the Frankton kid. Frankton, okay. Then Quentin Clark. Um, so of Logan's like, part, right? who uh, injury defaulted first round of the regional. Okay, and then Wyatt Strain. He has Wyatt Strange from Oak Hill. Then Ethan Dodson from Snyder, and then Braden Jellison from Elkhart. He's having a good senior year. Uh, Elkhart always has some good big guys. Um, so that'd be a, you know a thirteen versus nine possibly in the uh, ticket round. So that should be a good one. You you and uh you and uh Caleb do not agree on rankings at all, do you? <laughs> <laughs> nah, I didn't look that way. <laughs> you guys, you guys arguing? We need to get some intervention here. <laughs> I haven't even talked to him, man. Maybe he's not talking to me. I don't even know. He, he's he's, uh, bitter, he, he's looking for some pickums wins, so he's not gonna give you any information. Why? Who's he? Who's he not like? Well, he has he has uh, Jellison at number five and Orr at number two, and you have the uh, Jellison at thirteen and Orr at nineteen. So you have them. Switched. Jellison had a really good. Jellison had a really good. I mean, Orr Orr uh, took the loss to the Logansport kid, kind of dropped him down. Yeah. Um, like I said, like. Like I gotta look at it different than the, those guys gotta look at it. Um, for or like you you're gonna have to have the Frankton kid ahead of them, and you're gonna have to have Logan's Port ahead of them. Where um, uh, Jellison, I think he had some pretty good wins. I know he took a couple of losses to Peyton Kendall, who unfortunately is out of the bracket now in East Chicago. But I know he had a good win over uh, Theodore Sparks, who's a regional champ, put himself in a good position. And Al Smith uh, had a really good Al Smith. So uh, what does he got? Six losses. Yeah, he lost. Of his six losses, he got one to fish back. Two to fish back. Two to fish back. He was forced. We had to take two. He lost to Nate Johnson, the mullet, uh, and Ashton Hart Artwell, who's a really good kid, also. And he had in, in between there, he beat Theodore Sparks and Jorge Ortiz. They beat Jack Reese, who uh, who's had some really good ones. Pin Jack Reese, and then uh, lost to Hunter White Nick. So I don't I don't think that uh, maybe. We ain't communicating, but I think that he sees six losses and he thinks that those are all bad losses. But yeah, I see six losses and I see guys that are in the top ten in the state. Yeah, and uh, he lost to uh, Villa Forte um, four three last week. So I mean, he's right in the mix. To, that's gonna be a good take around match, um, real good one. And you know, those are six solid losses. We have, yeah, we got all of them. So um, yeah, so that's that's gonna be a good one. Um, good, you know, good way to wrap that up. So. Whew, we're done. <laughs> maybe next time, we'll, maybe, maybe we'll pull Nick in next week. He can just drive over. I think we're gonna. I think I think we might bring in uh, bring in Triple B next week for one of the episodes. So, you know, he, he we had fun with him last week. So, um, I, I don't know if they should. I don't know if we're gonna be able to do uh, 
Four. Maybe we break it down to three. Maybe we can do two. Usually we do two. Yeah. I can do two on next week's just a crazy week and hopefully I'm real busy scouting about seven or eight guys, seven guys. So or seven guys and that, that's the plan at least right now, but uh, should be an interesting uh, weekend of wrestling. Excited to be at this point, you know, obviously nerves and like, man, you know, you don't know what's going to happen and you know, I mean, you know, there's going to be a, some craziness happen. So. Oh yeah. I mean, there might be craziness that happens even before that. Like, You'll get those uh, messages, oh, like this guy missed weight or this guy didn't show up. I mean, look at uh, the Hobart Regional. One of the better guys at 106, he had one loss, didn't even show up. Jeez. Um, I, I don't know. I mean, I don't know the backstory to it, and I don't want to, you know, even speculate. But it's a tough time of year, man. It's a long season, and it's almost it's almost done. You know, some of the last matches they ever wrestle. You know, some of these guys and some of these ladies. Um, and some of the people that are already done you know, wrestled their last matches too. Yep. But as fans and, you know, as we do it, like it's, it's always uh, cool to cool to talk about wrestling and highlight some kids. And, you know, you know, unfortunately we can't bring on a, a ton of people that from every, you know, conference or regional, but, you know, <clears throat> it's cool that for a little bit, like these guys get a little bit of, you know, shine if they're not getting it in the paper or their local paper or whatever. Yeah, yeah, definitely. That's you know part of what we're doing. Um, check out Dribble B, post, where I posted his uh, his uh, semi state preview. That's the only one we're writing. Those things take way too long. I like doing the podcast right. way better. So right. I apologize for that. The podcast, I, I I enjoy the podcast. You can listen to those. We get a lot more information out of us. Um, you know, you get a lot more information out of these podcasts. Some good, some some very useless information. About ninety percent. So, um, but yeah, it should, should be some interesting, uh, you know, matches. I know, you know, Newcastle is going to be a great team race. Fort Wayne's just, uh, I don't want to try. I'm, I have a little, uh, formula to kind of do it based on rankings or records and stuff. And I don't even want to, I mean, it's just like one of those things, like I'm trying to do this and I'm like, man, I can't even, you know, Belmont looks like they might be the favorite, but you can't out, you can't count out someone like Jay County who has some good hammers and some guys that can go through. You have. Garrett has some good draws and guys that can punch through and make the semifinals or, you know, finals. And then you have Rochester. Rochester yeah, Western. You, yeah. Western has some good kids. I mean, it's, it's, it's going to be an interesting day. Um, who comes to wrestle? Norwell has some good guys. Monroe central. I mean, looking at some of the Monroe central draws, I mean, they have some pretty solid guys. They get, you, you get four or five guys through, you're going to be in a good spot. So, um, should be <laughs> Austin Clement with some, uh, comments, uh, Here's some the lowdown on his brother, him and his brother, and their. <laughs> so, yeah, that's wild, right? Yeah. I know they're B South kids, and they were at uh, Lucas ended up at Maryville. I think he has a brother that wrestles for uh, Ratliff right now yep, at Edgewood. Edgewood. He said, go Maryville, go Plume South, go Edgewood. So, man, he's got he's got quite a few. Uh, I, I can't imagine what you know, they change shirts like every fifteen minutes there or what. <laughs> they're like purple, man. Yeah, Edgewood's not purple, but. Yeah, so, no, that's so good. Um, but any uh, parting words of wisdom? Um, check everything out. Everything will be streaming on Track Wrestling slash Flow. Um, or if you don't have those, you can pay fifteen, twenty five bucks, something like that for. Uh, yeah, they, I think it was like fifteen. Yeah, for semi season, yeah. twenty five for including state, which would be you know, well worth it. I mean, twenty bucks, it's pretty nice. So. Um, I mean, it's just one of those things. I think. Uh, I mean, we're, we're close. We're getting ready to close out the season, and it's just been a crazy year, man. We talked about it early on with, um, you know, some of the wrestlers had passing like early, and it was, and it was crazy. And even going into last year, you know, you look at the the watch list, and there's kids that had passed away, like that are, you know, uh, not even 18 or maybe right at the age of 18. Um, I know uh, we talked about it last night with the Hammock family dealing with, um, you know. Some hospital stuff, like obviously my stuff, uh, right around Thanksgiving, and then uh, you know Coach Sessa from Crown Point, his mom passed away this, uh, today, I believe, or yesterday. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, enjoy it, man. Enjoy the ride. I'm glad. I know we enjoy you guys tuning in and listen to us kind of go on about wrestling, and you know it's always really cool meeting everybody at the state finals. You know when everyone kind of gets together and they're like, oh, you know we love the show. We watched this episode. And I always think that's really cool, and I think it's just a, a higher appreciation when you know you, you realize. One, like how close we are to, like we were, we kind of missed it that first year with COVID and a lot of states shut down and 
that they're allowing everyone to come back. It's it's pretty cool, man. I think it's gonna be really exciting. Yep, gonna be a great uh, great weekend of wrestling. Can't wait to uh, you know be talking about this a couple times next week and you know doing the brackets and all the fun state stuff. Who are your losses to the the fun articles with that and so. Um, and then the state reveal show will be what Sunday, um, yes. on the IHSA network. Those guys handle that. They do a great job. Um, Mike Gable does a great job. What's the other guys, like Greg, like what is it? Greg Rosslever, or what is it? Uh, Rake Straw. Rake Straw. Yeah. Those guys do an awesome job on the show. Um, I'm sure that's a, a huge turn for uh, like a huge ratings. Everyone's excited about that. So. Yeah. So we appreciate it. Yep. So anyway, we are going to uh, get out of here. We will see you guys next week and everyone have a great weekend.